what's going on, you bunch of dead fucks? <laughs> dead Ladies fuck. and gentlemen. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 86 of Two Dudes and Some Bullshit. The date today is Monday, September the 7th, 2020. It's 7.04 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And tonight, Tony Michael and I are watching Friday the 13th, part four, the final chapter. It wasn't, but they thought it was. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live. Yeah. Well, you know, you had the final chapter. Jason went to hell. Then he fought Freddy. I mean, you know, and then he went into outer space. It's true. A new beginning, which wasn't Jason, but, you know, whatever it is. Whatever. This is definitely a fan favorite. It's right up there. Well, not... I I don't think it's quite Friday the 13th, Part 6, Jason Lives. But people really like Friday the 13th, Part 4. And... It's a top fiver for the franchise, for sure. I think so. I think you are... Correct. Uh, I haven't watched this movie in a little bit, maybe a couple years. No, maybe last year. Whenever it was I was posting on social media, I, I, I had like a Friday the 13th marathon about maybe a year. Yeah, maybe it was the end of 2018, beginning of 2019. Anyway, so it's only yeah. been about a year since I've seen this movie. And uh, it's definitely one that I uh, really like. Of course, the introduction of Corey Feldman as Tommy Jarvis That's right. uh, makes his way into this movie. Uh, Tony, how are you doing, my man? Good, man. Just enjoying the uh, holiday weekend. How are you uh, enjoying the holiday up there? Yeah, doing pretty good. Labor Day weekend, Labor Day today. Uh, congratulations to all the mothers who are going into labor today. Uh- <laughs> We're here all week. Folks. You're screaming, you're yelling. <laughs> Bad end drill! Um, so, uh, yeah, it's it's been fine. I've actually been uh, working... Uh, on uh, the pre, uh, well, because we're you know neck deep into pre-production right now, and it's me, that's Billy, and said. yeah, that's right, that's right, neck deep. Um, so there's been a lot of things that we've been sort of working on, uh, or I've been working on anyway this weekend, and I've been just taking the time to do that. Uh, cool. And yeah, so just uh, things are moving along with that. Things are moving along with that, but it's Friday the thirteenth, part four tonight. Yeah, I'm excited. You know, we haven't uh, we haven't talked about Friday. We haven't done a Jason film. It, what was the last one? we did was it two or you had to been two, two or the original it was one of the or no was it six uh it's been I, a minute i know it's been a minute we i we, think like it was earlier two. in the year before shit hit the fan <laughs> yeah i think i think it was two the the uh chat room can let us know what what one it is but i i think it was two oh if well serves. okay that's right part five we did do part five we, I meant, well, we did okay, do sorry, part five Jason. but was that the last one we did i i can't remember yeah i think we did that in may Around yeah, my birthday. And that's the one. Uh, For that our was, birthdays, I should say. Yes. And that was, there were a couple episodes we had there where if you go back and watch them, Halloween H2O is one as well, where the audio is out of sync. And right. and it's, it's out of sync on H2O. It's out of sync on Friday 5. And yeah, there was yeah. something going on with YouTube and the internet back then. And uh, something happened. So it's unfortunate. But, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? So, um, yes, folks, yeah. we're watching Friday the 13th Part 4 tonight. Let's get this thing underway, shall Hell we? Yeah. I think this will be fun. Tony and I, uh, I'm just watching it off YouTube and we're, we're paused two seconds in. The Paramount logo is on the screen, but the star or the, the, um, uh, the logo hey, that comes trivia, over guys, maybe you can is, help me is not out. There yet. Uh, yeah. The mount, the mountain, the Paramount mountain. Is that the Matterhorn? The, 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 the mountain Matterhorn, or is that just a fucking painting that someone made up? I'm curious to know if anyone knows if that's a legit mountain. I think it's based on something, but well, that's a painting for sure. That's a, yeah. that's a, that's a painting. Maybe Bob but, Ross. Um, by, uh, by, <laughs> well, hey, it is a happy little mountain. It is a happy it's, little mountain. It's a happy little mountain. Get a little happy white little dust in there. Sure. Little That's white it. dust. That's it. That's it. That's <laughs> you know Bob. Bob, Bob, Bob like that white dust. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Kenny525 five says clouds. it's a mountain in the Andes. Oh, okay. Okay. Andes, I think. Yeah. Hmm. No clue. Anyway, to me, it's Indiana Jones and, you know, in the in the jungle. Or the, uh-huh. uh, whatever. Hey, that's right. Yeah, something like that. Um, okay, so yeah, let's do this. Uh, here let's we go. It. Friday the 13th, part four. And ladies and gentlemen, in five, four, three, two. Wait a minute. Why can't I see the little thing there? What's going on here? Five, four, three. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, and one. Yeah. Oh, this is when the stars just faded in and not do the little circular thing. That's right. That's right. 
Paramount Pictures presents. Paramount Pictures presents Friday the 13th, the final chapter. Oh, and this is that. The, yeah, they go through the recap. Yeah. Now, I'm going to give it to you straight. And I love that listening. the first four films did that. Then they stopped doing that, didn't they? After after this one, they didn't do recaps anymore. Did they do recap at the beginning of three? Yeah. They did? Yeah. Because oh, you yeah, see yeah, a little bit of Jeannie in right. uh, part three. Right. And I right. think she's even on like a television. There's mm. a shot of the woman watching before Jason changes clothes. Right, right. I got you. But do I they do you. a recap anymore? I, I don't remember a recap at the beginning of six. No, I don't think so. Mr. They Christine. did a recap in seven. Okay. All right. In seven? Yeah, well, seven. That's what I could You know, as cheesy as this franchise got, <laughs> it ain't got cheesy. They cheesy. stayed consistent got... with the continuity, man. Terrible. They really did. Such a terrible, terrible. Anything to me after six is garbage. Anything after six is just garbage. What, you mean Seven's Jason gar takes me a hand? Yeah, that one right there, yeah. Seven's I will garbage, say this, eight's garbage. The shot garbage. the photo was really cool of Jason looking through the subway. Oh, yeah, the artwork is great. Last Jedi had great effects. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, too. I got that Somebody, sphere. It's coming. Awesome. Somebody was making an argument with me. He's yeah. like, yeah, but Last Jedi, man, had awesome effects. I'm like, yeah, that, of course. It, well, I wouldn't expect anything less. Ah, uh, sackhead Jason. Good old sack. Bring, Bring back the sack. sack. Bring Damn. back the sack. That's going to be the uh, underline to my fan film. That's Crystal it. Lake, a Friday 13th fan film. Oh, Bring back the sack. <laughs> I think that should be the subtitle of your movie. Bring yeah. back the sack. No, the sack is sack back. Is back. The sack is back. <laughs> that sounds so 1980s. I might as well, right? <laughs> That's it. Yeah, you might as well. Oh yeah. Oh right. Yeah. My favorite That's a great kill. kill. That's my favorite. Mark's death in part two with yeah. the machete going down the stairs. That's my favorite kill in the whole. It's a great franchise. kill. Yeah. If you're just joining us, folks, we're just watching the recap here at the beginning of Friday the 13th, part four. We're two minutes, 32 seconds into the movie. They're showing us kind of going back and forth between three and two. Yeah. She was my least favorite Friday girl, I got to tell you. Part three? Final girl. Uh, the girl, yeah. What's her name? Uh, oh, Christy. I, I didn't, Christy. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't mind her. I liked her. She's not not one of my favorites. Mm. The girl in here is good. Do you know how amazing some of the, it, how cool it would be if some of these series, actually, like imagine if Friday the 13th part four, yeah, I know it's like, it's like a diehard movie. Imagine right. if Friday the 13th part four or the Friday series actually ended at four. It actually did end. And now there's rumblings of a return. Can you imagine oh, how exciting cool. people would like how excited yeah. it would be? And it, it like, it would be like if there was nothing after Halloween, you know what I mean? Or, or imagine if there was nothing after Elm Street 3. Well, I don't know, How because if there was nothing after Halloween, it makes you wonder where the franchise would be today. Would it even be a franchise? Would it be as popular no, as it, it is today? No, you know? no. It'd be no, that but... one-off film, like, hey, remember that film with that dude? Yeah, it's true. It's true, and I, I would have been okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> Joan Freeman. We got a lot of love for Chris as a final girl in the chat room. My girl, of course, you know. Yeah, I like Chris. I, I, love, like I Chris. love my Amy Steele. I love my genie. Amy Steele. I think the final girl in this movie is actually largely forgettable. But well, she's I, I good. Do. I like. I was just saying. I she's, like her. She's good, but I think Corey Feldman steals her thunder. Oh, I think. I think this does. movie's more about Feldman than it is her. Yeah. And I think that's why whenever I think of Friday Four, I don't think of the girl. I think of Feldman. And Feldman is sort of the the he's the he's the glue that kind of brings everything together, so to speak. And the girls, I guess she's a final girl because she's the only one, she, she's a girl and she's the only one that's left in the movie. But I never, I don't know, it, 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 she doesn't have the same final girl punch or the same kind of final girl uh, aura about her as you get in uh, one, two, and one, two, three. True. Uh, and even six. And five, same thing. Five, I don't, mm, I don't know. I guess because it's more of an ensemble piece. You know, and sense that there's a couple I, of them there. I and, love five. The more I watch it, I, the more I freaking love Roy, man. Fucking Roy. Go yeah. Roy. 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 Oh, that's right. I forgot about the news uh, thing with the helicopters and shit at the beginning. Helicopters. It's like a full scale there. production at the beginning of this film, man. Oh, yeah. The helicopter's going. The cops are there. The news yep. are there.
Dave's got the sound effects going. Of course, we all know if uh, if this were actually done today in 2020, they'd probably get like uh, CNN to report here and they'd be like, well, you know, we had a massacre here up at Cramp Crystal Lake, but it was a mostly peaceful massacre. That's it. It was mostly it. peaceful. Mostly peaceful. Tonight on the Crystal Lake Massacre. <laughs> Make sure you wear your mask to the massacre. <laughs> Yeah, that's what it'll be. Yeah, and this, of course, is the it. It kind of, in some ways, does pick up kind of where the third one left off because we go well, right back to the saying, barn. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like the, for continuity, yeah. man, it would they they did a good job. I mean, we can pick on like the <laughs> the, the, the crazy uh, storytelling that the franchise became, but they stayed with the story in the continuity yeah, of it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, they did. They did. Friday the 13th part four the final chapter. my grandfather oh, I've shared this story man like he was the first four especially was like religion to him the first four Friday films yeah loved I loved watching those I, I miss that's one thing I do miss I wish he was around still to you know see what I'm doing on Instagram with the horror characters and just just to be able to just hang out and watch the movies with him. We never really debated. We never like, we never got into like deep theory conversation. We just grandfather, grandson hanging out, watching Friday. The yeah. 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 Just enjoying it. You. And I, I missed that. Cause yeah, he, he loved the, I and mean, I'm telling dude, like just passionately loved these first four films. Yeah. Always would watch it every time when I would go over there and visit with them on the weekends. Is he still alive? No, he passed away he in 2011. So almost oh, 10 years ago. Yeah. 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 It was a year my mom and dad died. That was a bad year. Oh, he's got long fingernails. Somebody give him a manicure. Somebody give him a manicure. There's a, there's a classic photo of me. I have to show it to you later. Uh, my mom took, and it, I'm very, very young. I'm somewhere between the ages of, I'm in between seven and eight. And I just started watching horror films. Yeah. And there's a shot of me sleeping on his lap. Because every time we would watch a Friday the 13th film, he would always follow it up with uh, showing watching Cheers. Because he didn't want my mind to like have the last image to be a horror that film in my mind. That was your first introduction to Cheers. That was my first introduction okay. to Cheers. But that's why that show is so important to me. Because it was Very watching cool. it with my grandfather. And she snapped right. a shot of me just totally passed out on his lap. Uh, we were, and we were watching, my, watching Cheers at the time. Because we had I just finished it. watching. I don't know which Friday film we watched. But it was one yeah. of the first four. Amazing. Amazing. That's so cool that he was so into it. I love that. Everything just goes away and now it's all Dead quiet. silence, yeah. Dead I, silence. It's, it's, it's effective. It is. Yeah. Now, and just, tell and, me and you not, just linger on that. You hold on. In the, um, it's great. The, 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 the hospital morgue here, he always reminds me. Have you ever, do you ever see that He's show? Police Academy. Well, I know that, but do you ever see yeah. the TV show in the 90s, uh, Blossom? Yes. He looks like not... Joey Lawrence, but the brother, the other brother in Blossom, he looks like they looks like the two could be related. Really, I have to look at that. And you look at him, and you look at the other dude from the the guy the, here on on the right in the white the coat. More guy, yeah, the yeah. more guy. He looks like the, the 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 kid who played in Blossom that they could be related. All right, let me see here. Blossom. So he would be. Anthony Russo instead of Joey. Yeah, not Joey Lawrence or uh, but the other. Oh yeah, brother. he does. You, he does similar features. Yeah, similar. Yeah, for sure. I can definitely see it. I can definitely see what you're saying. Yep. Yeah, totally. Like it could be his older brother. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I can see that. I can definitely see that. Some of the kills in this are my favorite too. Um, yeah, there's great kills in this. Crispin's is one of my favorite with the oh, fucking um, with the um, bottle opener and then the fucking yes. um, meat cleaver. If anything, you just watch this movie for the fucking dancing and the dead fuck comments. Oh, yeah. Crispin's dancing. Nobody can top that. Well, and the booty dancing here, too. That's right. right. I forgot about the booty. The, the girls. The right. Girls doing exactly. their jazzercise. That's that was, exactly it. My mom 
did this shit back in the 80s, man. Oh, uh, <laughs> so did my mom. Totally did Every mom did, did in the 80s, I think. Oh, yeah. Dude. If y'all don't know, you young generation kids, man, you don't understand. Our parents were, mothers especially, were totally into this shit. Exactly. Exactly. And it's him, isn't it? It's the guy. It's not Jason. I think it's the Axel. Guy. Axel. That's Axel. 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 Wrong character name to give that guy. I know. There's <laughs> only one like Axel. Axel. It's only one Axel. And it's uh it's Axel Foley as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Zach Gaxiola says, uh, Dave, do you want the Friday the 13th series to get a complete reboot or could they go Halloween 2018 route? I think the best thing to do with Friday the 13th is do a reboot. Um, but I don't know. It, it, it's They're going to have to do something different with it. it you know, and, and like Tony and I have talked a lot about ideas of what they could do. And, cause, I, I mean, still like the Pam Voorhees idea, but same, that's just me, same. you know? same i just don't i just think it's like, like where else can you go with jason well, and <laughs> the, literally gone a space with the character even you know? though friday the 13th the last one is 09 so it's almost 10 years ago in terms of production value and quality like it looks phenomenal still like in terms of it's you know like what are you going to do reboot it again how much different is a new reboot of friday the 13th going to be from the 2009 movie i mean you might have a different story it might not be about a guy trying to find his sister okay yeah. but in terms of like the, the the quality of kills or that i mean it's like i just don't know what you do like you've already done this you know and i think i think you just gotta just go back and just sort of reinvent it keep friday the third you know the flavor there but kind of just look at it from a different point of view and because if you don't then you're just going to make the same fucking movie over again. And then you'll find that it'll, you know, no one, no one cares. And it's like, it's a different generation now. There's different people now. It's different tastes. It's different vibes. You can't like, you it's can tough make, you got to blend it for the old people who grew up with this. And then yeah. the new generation that, you know, you do. I mean, and, and like I said, Halloween 18 didn't do, it didn't make 250 million at the box office because it's a great, it's a phenomenal fucking movie. One of the greatest horror Lightning movies of all time. Bottle, you know? No, no, exactly. It, but it wasn't anything like that. It was, it was, nostalgia is a powerful drug. And, and it was, people have been burned and you had Nick Castle back. You had John Carpenter back. What's what I mean Jim by Lee the Lightning back. in the Bottle? You had exactly. all these elements together that you're just, you're not going to get again. You know, and, and, and Halloween. Well, until 18, Jamie Lee reboots it when she's 80 and it's right, Halloween 40. <laughs> right. I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's a bad movie. It's not a bad movie. It's not a bad movie, but it's, it's not like, I mean, you know, it didn't make that much money because, you know, it was fucking amazing. It made that much money because there was hype and people yeah. were hyped around it. And, and, uh, um, you know, it had the nostalgia wave, you know, and, and, um, it just, you know, I just, I just realized not to within my last couple of years of watching this that he breathes right there. You see the breath coming up from right. the sheet. Mm. I never noticed it until it was like within the last oh, couple of years when really? I saw it. Never noticed it. Yeah, I've always noticed that. It's kind of it's one cool. of those things that you just I don't pay attention to, except for of course the girls' butts. I totally pay attention. Right, to. right. I mean, I'll never miss that. It was a little detail. Now, who's Jason in this one? Is this white? This is Ted White. Yeah. Yeah. Ted White. And Ted White's already in his like 50s in this movie. And he wasn't too keen on playing this character, wasn't he? Initially. I don't know. From like the, from the, uh, from the, um, it was one of the Jasons. It was either part three or part four in the uh, Crystal Lake Memories documentary. Mm -hmm. One of them talks about how they, they weren't really t too like, eh, you know what I mean? It was just right. like it was a job. Right. See, that's the thing. Like, I mean, if all you care about, and there are people that just care about this kind of thing, if all you care about is just put Jason in an environment where he can have, you know, where we can have great kills, you know, and the gorier, the more gruesome, the better, then yeah, it's easy. But the problem is that it's not 1984 anymore. And audiences are more much. It doesn't mean that there wouldn't, that there isn't a section of the Friday the 13th fans or the horror fans or movie fans that wouldn't appreciate that or value that. But if you want to get, you know, it's just the people, the horror's evolved. And, 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 you know, you need more than just putting Jason in a, because 
the if you just want a one-off movie of Jason just wrecking havoc, well, you got it. No nine, but that's not what people want. They want series. They want things that are going to just continue to go on and on and on. But what do you and, do? Right, exactly. What do you do? You know what I mean? Well, you have to develop a story. You got to develop characters. You got to develop continuity. You have to have, you know, things make sense. You got to connect things. You got to pay attention to to details. And that's what I love about our generation, man. Shit didn't need to make sense. We just they made them, and we had fun with them. You know? Yeah, yeah. And there's, but at the same time, I, I do value the the importance of that, and and I think. Well, I do where it's warranted, like in films like uh, The Conjuring or Hereditary, where story arcs and storylines are very important. A slasher film, I don't, I don't, I don't need it to be like serious. It's no, a slasher film, but you know? that's why slasher films largely don't go to theaters anymore. True, is because is because we're, we've evolved beyond that horror. I mean, at one time, horror. I mean, it's it's always been you know, and you've heard me say this. It's always been a number of things, but the slasher subgenre, the golden age of slasher, was horror at this time, and it went to the movie theaters and it made lots of money. But audiences now, you know, thirty five years removed, it's just not what it's 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 niche now. It's it's, and you know, it's the only thing that's like yeah, like. I and mean, that's why I always say that a new slasher film largely don't they don't go to the theaters, you know, Terrifier or you know what have you. Yeah, Hatchet. isn't Terrifier two going straight to VOD? Well, yeah, of course, because yeah. because it's not going to make money at the box office. Not because it's a bad movie. It's just because the demand isn't there for that kind of thing commercially anymore. That gratuitous and and it's just not there. We've evolved beyond that, and there's nothing wrong with that. But the only slasher movies that you'll largely see in the theaters are movies that already have proven out. That's Halloween, Elm Street, Friday, Candyman. You know, the, Scream. they're they're the Scream, right? They're they're they have a history already. You know, but we're not seeing anybody new come to the theater. It's the all yeah. the old guys. They're they're proven properties, and they're riding a wave of nostalgia. And that's what they ride right into the box office is nostalgia. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean the movie's not good, but. You know, you think people are going to see Scream 5 because... No, it's nostalgia, it's man. Nostalgia, absolutely. Of course it is. I mean, it's hard to believe that that Scream 4 is almost 10 years old. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. Nuts. Next year. It doesn't Next feel year. like it, you know, but because like every time you watch the film, it's 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 modern. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's the, mo the technology is modern yeah. in, in that film, and it's just crazy to think that it's a decade now. Yeah. Here he is, dead fuck. Dead fuck. <laughs> Poor Crispin. Uh, yeah, you know, this he's is been great. very cool in, in some of the interviews. Not many <laughs> he's talked about, you know, but he's been very cool versus like Kevin Bacon. Um, yes. You know, I know yeah. Kevin Bacon's been a little bit more open to it in recent years, but for years, Bacon just totally did not talk about the original Friday the 13th. That's true. Um, That's true. But Crispin's always been pretty cool about talking Crispin's to it. He's been it pretty cool up. about it. Yeah. I love how, yeah, he's a dead fuck. I love it. Now, there's the, uh, there's the, uh, uh, now, isn't it mistaken on this one? Isn't it a mistake? 79. No. No, no, no. On the one in the movie here. Isn't it a mistake on this one in the movie? Or is it... Does it say 79 on... Yeah, it says 79. This one? Okay. Yeah. Um, that's what we based the tombstone off of. But, but this movie. that's the thing, is that is that horror... Friday... This is Friday the 13th. You know, it's, it's DNA is just kids going to camp and getting killed. But unfortunately... The market, it's not, it's too, we're, we're too big for that now. And, and those things don't, they, they, they're great for VOD and they're great for right. maybe. Well, like you said, story streaming. matters. Right. Now it's, we've beyond that now. And, and unfortunately these kinds of movies just, you know, are not, you can't, you know, I mean, it doesn't mean you can't, but. It's tough sell without the big IPs. And it's, the big it's a tough sell without the big IP. That's yep. exactly it. Who was this girl? She was somebody's like, I thought she was, the chat will let me know. Who was this girl? I thought she was I like somebody's. Was a random. I thought she was somebody's like daughter, cousin or something. In the movie or something. Maybe I'm fucking completely wrong. I thought she was just a random hitchhiker that she's going to get it here while she's downing her banana. Eating a banana. Yeah. No pun, right? No, exactly. <laughs> no pun at all in this scene. Nothing like watching this girl eat a banana. <laughs> I love this kill though. Quick and easy, it's good. Right to the point. Yeah. Oh 
yes, yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Corey Feldman. Now, Never this wasn't his movie? first film, right? But it was one of the first. It was, wasn't, uh, no, I don't believe it was his first, but it was one of his first. Yeah, and this is well, Goonies, right? A year before Goonies, that's right. Yeah, year before Goonies. He was a busy little fella back then. He was. Oh, yeah, he was, yeah. God, my grandmother had that picture of orange juice pitcher. This looks like an ad for orange juice right now. Orange juice. OJ. No, she wouldn't put orange juice in there. She put Tang in there. Ah, Remember Tang? Tang, yes. Remember, um, oh, what was that other one? Uh, Crystal Light? I, that's what I'm drinking right now. It's in it's the packet, Crystal really? Light packets. Re yeah. it, now, that's weird. Like, think about That's kind of weird. Isn't that, uh, isn't that a bit of a coincidence? Oh, that like, is a coincidence, yeah. Like, that's kind of weird. Like, who talks about fucking Crystal Light anymore? I bring it up and you just so happen to be drinking it? Oh well, yeah, I get the. I don't know. Do they have the, the packets up there? The little. Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I mean, like, it just seems kind of, you know, it's crystal light. It's not like Coke. You know, I think the probability is very. Folks, not cocaine. That's right. No, 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 cocaine. <laughs> it's a hell of a drug. That's it. According to Rick James, anyways. Yeah. He's a dead fuck. Here's the dead fuck right here. This is the uh, movie. That's a sin, the, uh, you dead fuck. The uh, Double Mint Twins, right? Are they in this movie? Yes, that's right. Yeah, I don't mean literally. But they were they were the Double no, no. Mint Twins, yeah. but yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying. And there's Juicy Fruit. Remember that one? Uh huh. Get your ski shined up. Grab a stick of Juicy Fruit. The taste <laughs> is gonna move ya. Back in the day when everything was a jingle. Yeah, everything was a jingle. And dude, if you could write jingles in the '80s, you were paid. Yeah, and uh, I don't. I've never felt that excited to do anything after having a piece of gum. But <laughs> she looks like Sarah Jessica Parker, like a like a, a young little bit, a little bit. Yeah, she's hot. The brunette. Yeah, I'm the brunette. Partial, oh my god, yeah. I'm partial she's to brunettes. So. When I say partial, folks, I mean I don't think blondes are attractive. It's just you know everybody has preferences and. I will always notice a brunette over a, a blonde. Uh, if they're the as long same. as I got a nice ass, that's all I'm paying attention to first. <laughs> After that, don't matter. Paul, another movie with Paul. She dies. Hey, Paul. Oh, Paul. Paul. Man, oh, Paul, Paul, I give you all no key. The character's name is Paul. Two in this one. Yeah. Halloween, obviously. Paul's just Paul. No the Legend key. of Paul. That See, that's a horror movie that needs to be made. The Legend of Paul. The Legend of Paul. Imagine if Annie was like, no And it's subtitled, key. Legend of Paul, where are the keys? But please, my Paul. <laughs> It's really, really deep. You know what it is, Fall Prophet? Um, when you're talking about how crazy the 80s girl look compared to girls 2020, the girls in 2020 look very young. Like they could be in their 20s and they look like they're teenagers. The girls in the 80s could be in their early 20s and look like mature women. It, the, this, it's just the way they dress. It was. It's totally different style. Corey Although even though know, 80s style is coming back. Yeah. It's how the girls are wearing the 80s style isn't the same how the girls wore it back then. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Corey Feldman's... Uh, Corey Feldman's the little peeping Tom. He's a peeping Tom oh, her, watching the girl. Of course, I'd be doing dress. the same shit. I mean, at his age, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Girl changing right across away from me. Yeah, there it is. Exactly the mother what comes I'd be doing. In, I think the mother comes in here in a second, too, I think. Yep. Yeah, Corey Feldman in the Burbs. Yep, that's right, 1980. 89, I think. That was a, about six years after this movie. Gremlins was before this, right? Gremlins was 84. So same year. Jeez, man, that kid was really working. He was working, yeah. Talented, he was talented. Definitely one of the big, uh, better kid actors of the 80s, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the one thing I... I didn't like with the Tommy Jarvis character that they went away from as he got older was the uh, the mask creation. I really liked that 
part to his arc in mm. uh, Friday Four. Mm. Um, you know, being that creative mask maker. Yeah, they should have carried that part of his character over and had yeah. it had it mean something later. Exactly. Yeah, they could still do it. Vincent DeSantis. Yeah, Vincent. Looking forward to your film, buddy. Saw the show. That was a good show with him. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it was a good show. Yeah, he's a great dude. And his trailer looked fucking amazing. His trailer was great. His trailer was great. Look at this hair. Oh, the wavy hair, the 80s. The wavy yeah. hair. Ted, Teddy wanna... What, what does he keep saying later? Teddy wanna... The fuck does he keep saying? Can't remember. Chat room, let me know. Oh, that's right. He did have the mask in part five, or a mask. But you know, you know what I'm saying. He wasn't making them. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're the doublement twins. Double, double your friend. Hi, we're the doublement twins. That's it, Frank Riker. Thanks, buddy. Teddy bear want to kiss. Teddy bear want to kiss. Teddy bear. Teddy bear want to kiss. <laughs> like you know what i would have had it, it, for tommy jarvis's room in part five he was still making masks like that was set up in his room you know right what I mean? yes that was his kind of escape from reality and dealing yeah. with all the stuff that he had been dealing with yeah sort of like what rob did with michael in his room in halloween right <laughs> oh that was like really pronounced. <laughs> yeah, the, as, I will say as the series progressed, the kick, 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 ma, 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 we really became cha, 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 ha, ha, ha. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It well, really well, started to sound more and more like yeah. that and not what Harry then, intended it to sound in the initial with the concept right. of Bill and Ma. And then by the even the later films, you it oh, became like, it. Yeah. It, it became like, it became like, it was like something. Fucking yeah, it was like weird shit. shit. I gotta ask, why is she walking around with trepidation? Like it's she's Friday the Thirteenth, man. Yeah, you know? yeah, I know, but she's walking and like the director's like, "Hey, man, we need this scene, and uh, we don't know why." That actually segue into where everything's happening. I, ha <laughs> I have to admit, looking at that scene now, it's a pointless scene. It is. And it's just surely for suspense, but I don't understand why the character would be walking with trepidation. Like, it's not nighttime. Did she see something? Does she feel something? Like, you get a sense that she's just spooked by walking in the woods, but the it just feels... The strong with you. That's my best <laughs> impersonation. <laughs> but it just feels so... I don't know. Oh, skinny dipping. Holy jeez. Thank you for the ash and boob shots. Oh, Teddy's going in. Teddy's going in. He can't take it. Come on, Teddy. Get in there, you son of a bitch. Look at that. Hey, look at that. It's the old family. Hey, that, that, that looks like the station wagon that Clark Griswold had before they got the family truckster, truckster. at the beginning of uh, the first vacation movie. Doesn't it? It do. Not the truckster, but the... The first one before they destroyed Yeah, the, the one that gets smushed. Yeah. They're skinny dipping. That's why I shame, man. Yeah, they're skinny, skinny dipping. Skinny dipping. It is an American pastime that young kids in the eighties well, used to do. Fucking I'm not sure Crispin Glover can't anymore. can't do it. He's all like, "I'm coming in. I'll be right there." <laughs> I, if I'm not mistaken, they filmed when they were filming this. Um, Halloween was happening, and the neighborhood that I think Crispin and a few people took Corey Feldman to is where. Um, they filmed E.T. Oh, okay. Or they went trick-or-treating in the same neighborhood. They weren't filming ah, okay. it at the time, but you know what I mean? Like, because it was close to the area right. where Spielberg filmed E.T., and they took Corey Feldman trick-or-treating um, ah, okay. during, uh, during, in and around Halloween. Gotcha. Oh, it's breaking down. Something like that. Yeah. Everything's breaking down. And they used this house in part four several times in other sequels, right? It was used for some other stuff. I, I, it's been I don't know. That's a good I question. I watched that documentary, but I remember them talking about it was filmed for other other parts in the series. Right. Any more news on Halloween Kills? Delayed inevitable. No, I don't know. October of next year, right? 
so far, anyways. Yeah, yep. I miss, th- I do miss this Friday the 13th music. And yes, yes. The, yeah, the Manfredi, um, or Manfredini, well, or whatever his name is there. That today, I, I, Part six the soundtrack is not bad. It's 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 okay. You know what I mean? Well, it's fine. But I but know what you're saying. I, yeah. There's a certain tone to Harry's. Harry, the first like four him. films have a very specific, specific tone, absolutely. sound, and I, I miss that. No, I don't want to go in. Yeah, Grant. No, I know E.T. was filming early in 81. I was saying the neighborhood they filmed E.T. in is where they took Corey Feldman while they were in production of Friday 4 – to take him trick or treating mm. because um, it, Halloween came up and he was, you know, a kid at the time. So a couple of the right. cast, and I think Crispin was one of the cast members, and I think his sister and a couple other people took him out trick or treating. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, that was the that. neighborhood that they went trick or treating in. Right. Oh, so it's part seven. Part seven, um, they used the, the part four house is the same. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's, now, let's I will fight. say this. As far as the aesthetic look goes, yeah. I believe that this setting could actually be on the same lake as the first two films, whereas part three, no. Part three looks like yes. it's another fucking world. But this... Looks like, you know, it could be at the other end, a few miles down, you know, Oakland Lake's yep. pretty big. And I just yep. looking at it now and rewatching it again with fresh eyes, yes. I can feel like it's in the same area as the first two movies. You know what I mean? I agree 100%. I, I, I can believe that it is the same lake. Yeah, just further down. Yeah. Part three, man, that's like a pond. <laughs> it's so well, yeah, and it, and it was man-made and it was shot and it was weird. Yeah. Ugh. Now, this isn't guy. this guy based like? Isn't this the Jared Padalecki character that they based this guy off of in the remake? Or no? I thought I, that this was the dude that I they based no it idea. off of. I gotta admit, I'm I'm not brushed up on the chat room. Might know. Chat room will let me. No. Uh, just a timestamp, folks. We are 32 minutes and uh, 39 seconds into the movie. Friday the 13th, part four, the final chapter. The final chapter. Lee Bauer says, question, uh, question in this day and age, do theaters still use film or show movies or is it digital now? No, it's digital. Digital. It's digital. Oh, so they this is, oh, they this no longer change Sandra, reels. Sandra, okay, Sandra's brother from part um part two so for those who don't know sandra is the one who picks up that sign in part two when jeff and uh i forget the the comedy guy's name now off the top of my head jesus that's bad that's like my favorite film um but when anyways when she picks it up and she's holding it that's okay this is sandra's brother all right okay i heard like that actress who played sandra too like she got into like some serious drugs later in life Sorry, she is hot. Text from Bruce. I mean, I like Megan from Part Six, but I gotta tell you, looking at her, I might give her the three slot for the, the final girls in Friday. She, she's hot. Man. I'm not gonna lie, she's fucking hot. All the women are attractive. I mean, it, oh, I mean she's fucking hot, dude. I'm looking at her in that fucking white shirt. With, the, they all, spots, yeah, they all, they all are. I mean, <laughs> they're all, all of them really are. I mean, I'm thinking of Amy Steele, Jennifer Cook, and what's this actor's name? I don't really, I don't watch this one as much to know it like. Off the top I of my head. Know. I don't know. Yeah, making the masks. See, like this. This would have been cool for part five, like if his room was what, like what, How would the chat room feel if Trish, Jason that's was her killed? Name in life, or is that her character's name? No, that's her character's name. Okay, Kimberly what, back. Thanks, guys. What if, what if, how would people feel if Jason actually did die in this movie? They follow through with that re- very unusual look on Tommy's face at the end of this movie. And Tommy, there's a mask that we've yet to see. The blue mask, right? That Tom, well, I, I, no, just any mask that, that oh, we've yet I to gotcha, see gotcha. that Tommy has made. And as an adult, he puts it on and becomes like this killer. 
I mean, dude, I like the idea, but again, like we've said, if it doesn't have Jason in it, it's like... No! I want Jason over and over and over and over! Like, I, I, I'm already prepared for the backlash. Well, there may not be a backlash. There could be, there may not be, I don't know. Oh, here it comes. Or not having the hockey mask, or maybe I will have the hockey mask in my fan film. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Everybody! Oh, I want everybody in the chat room right now to get off your ass and start ever. dancing like Crispin Glover. Yes. Sorry, say again. This is the greatest dance scene ever. Oh. He makes Flash Dance look like he makes Footloose Dude. Kevin Bacon look like Amateur Hour. Yes, fuck Dirty Dancing. This is Dirty Dancing right here. Look how dirty that fucker is getting. Look at him go. Someone needs to make like a meme out of this and just put modern day music over it. Yes. <laughs> Or put the footloose, uh, dong, 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 dong. Christmas is just the fucking coolest shit. It's, it's unfortunate fucking <laughs> what they did to him in Back to the Future. It really is. Can you imagine? There's no way, there's no way a girl would be dancing with him going, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is but, no you know, way. It, here's the thing. If it was anyone else, it would look stupid. But because it's him, it's, well, it, it's just it's it's crispin you know what i mean like well yes but if you look at his character like it'd be it'd be like like ladies in the chat room if there are any in the chat room right now oh i do see a couple like there's no way that if you were with a guy who you didn't know and he starts dancing like that that you would be standing there going oh yeah what's that that's amazing <laughs> let's keep dancing <laughs> you wouldn't do it you wouldn't do it Good old vinyl, baby. Vinyl. Vinyl. Never goes out of style. Good old vinyl. Classics never go out of style. That's it. Holy shit, this movie's going by like a clip. Yeah, it is. It's like fucking less than an hour to go. That's Teddy Bear has show you it's done, baby. Uh, Dusty, nah, he man. He dances I don't, slowly I don't like a collect, fucking chain. Um, uh, media like as far as physical media anymore i i know they released the cult friday the 13th deluxe set but i just do everything digital now with my movies mm. did you get it dave the, get what? the, the deluxe set the friday the 13th deluxe no set? no no i will eventually crispin should have when he started to slow dance with her he should have been awkward then too like he should have been like just really awkward and weird starting yeah, to fucking robot yes. and shit Yes. 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 We're always coming. I will say this. When he gets it at the end, man, he really sells me on his death. He like, does. He's Get out like, of here! He's killing me! He's, he's killing, killing me! me. Like, he really fucking sells it. Like, oh, he does. Like, Dude. It's, it's terrifying. It is terrifying. It, it, yeah. It's just like, you're like, fuck, man. Like, oh, yeah. Fucking, is yeah. Ted it's, going off on him? Yeah, it's terrifying. <laughs> Anna M. Pops, one of my new patrons, and uh, uh, sends Anna. in a super sticker, I think they're called. Something like that. Anna, Thank you very call, much. Can, can we call you Anna Banana or no? And <laughs> I think we'll just. I don't you gotta know. ask nowadays, just to make sure I don't upset anyone. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, Anna, thank you so much for the. Uh, yeah, they. Hey, it's a little mug. It's, it's a little. It's a little character with a mug. Cheers, Anna. Cheers. Oh, I didn't even know you can do that. Super stickers uh, or whatever. Whatever it is, the animation thing. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can send in super chats, which are questions and little super uh, stickers. So thank you very much. Appreciate that. That's cool. The twins. Get your steak ski signed up. Is this the it's one? Just, the the one? I guess she's the seal of approval. Anna just followed up with a super chat with a banana. Oh, uh, banana! It's I think I think that is the the banana of approval, ladies and gentlemen. That's the banana. Of Does approval. she go swimming out to the? Is, is this part four where the yeah. girl in the red there swims out to the raft? And they talk about like Ted White got pissed at the production yeah. because she, she the girl almost froze to death, and he called he actually called like we got to stop or else she's gonna die because the water was so cold and she right. was pretty blue. Yeah. Anna, you are our banana. <laughs> I won't overkill that, I promise. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the Jared Leto lookalike dude, too. This dude kind of has like an older, or, but then again, Jared Leto's like 90 and he looks like he's 40. 
Right. Dude never ages. That's true. Like, I always forget, like, he's, like, in his 30s in American Psycho. Who is? Jared Leto. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's older than, than he appears. He's older than you think, but, I mean, yeah. dude takes care of himself, obviously. Yeah, exactly. Look at Teddy. Nobody likes him. And it's ironic, right? Because Teddy's the one who thinks, you know, he thinks he's the ladies' man. He's telling Crispin right. Glover he's a dead fuck. And Teddy's the one that's ever that everybody's ignoring. But because he's a chump. Look at him. He's a fucking chump. Ah, that's okay. We all had friends like that. I had a friend like that who just thought like, I mean, and I give him credit, man. He just was that overly confident guy who feels that he could get any girl he wanted. And yeah. sometimes yeah. we would just watch him just fall flat on his face. And he it's the never best. bothered him. It never bothered him at all. Wow. Fascinating. Yeah, oh, Crispin giving him some shade. Lied, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here she goes. Of course, you got to have the another skinny dip scene. Scott, we didn't have yeah, enough. Well, got to have the way one it is. more. The way it is. Paul? It, it ain't a Friday the 13th film if you don't have tits and ass. Paul? I don't know. I remember I got into some shit, man, for that fucking picture I did on Instagram with the girl laying there naked. Oh, I know. Oh, it's, it's my God. I got into There's a follow-up picture that I have that I've been holding off on sharing. It's, it's a great shot because she's laying the opposite way, and you do see her ass. And I know mm. I can post it on Instagram, but I, I'm just – I know I'm going to get shit because yeah, the modern-day yeah. people, man, don't like that stuff. And I'm just like, it's a Friday the 13th theme, man. You, that's what a Friday the 13th has, tits and ass. That's it. Jeez, man. Can't do yeah, shit she's very, anymore. She, she's very attractive. Oh, yeah. Well, we were talking about that Like I said, yeah. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, you know what I mean? I like this scene, though, because this is uh, one of my favorite scenes in the movie. Uh, not for obviously the reasons you think, but oh, there's I, some... No explanation. When, when you are swimming, yeah, when you're... <laughs> but it's... When she goes out into the water and she's getting closer and closer to that raft, yep. I love the lighting on it. And there's this, it's eerie. It just looks very eerie out there. And she's like that shot right there with the yeah. light coming from the one side and the smoke, the smoke, sorry, the, the smoke, fog. She's getting, just that shot is, that right there, that shot. It's yep. eerie. It's it nicely lit. Looks very eerie to me. I've always thought it looked eerie. Um... Yeah, it's great stuff. How Jason gets from one place to another so quickly, I'll, I'll never know. But Him and Michael, man, they're the power-walking champions of the world. Power-walking champions of the world. <laughs> the power-walking champion of the world! We don't know how they do it. They just do it. They just do it. And I love that she's just... We're holding on her. Fog. Yeah, watch the uh, Crystal Lake Memories if you guys like get a it. chance and listen to Ted White talk about this scene yeah. and how pissed off he got at the production crew for what they were putting her through. I will. Love that fog right by. I love that. Screw you, Paul. I love it. Screw you, Paul. Oh, yellow. Oh, ow. Oh! Ha, ha, ha. Woo! That was good. That was good. Um, poor Teddy. Honorable Teddy. guy. He can't cheat on his... Paul can't cheat on his girl. No, I can't do Good it. for you, Paul. Good for you, Paul. Don't forget those keys, I Paul. Can't, I can't do this. I, um, I've got to go out and die with my lady. He says that. I forget how Paul gets it in this film. I forget, too. Does he get by like a tree or something or oh paul oh paul i give you oh chucky bud sends in a two dollar super chat thanks buddy for you dave my bro and tony my bros thank you very much buddy appreciate it yeah if you have super chats to send in folks you can we'll get to them at the end of the show um if a lot begin to come in of course we'll we'll put that towards uh the end of the show um when we have a, a little bit of a QA. and a see, see, I think he should be doing awkward. Like, I think he should be kind of... I guess he is a little bit. Look at him. I think you want to be with Dad. Well, I did, but... Now I want to be with you. Whore. What a fucking whore. 
My kind. Yeah, but but now he's so naive and so inexperienced that he's sitting there. He's going, oh, or is oh. he? Is he playing it? Is he playing it to Ooh. her? Though? Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe he, maybe the dead fuck ain't so dead after all. Exactly. Ooh. He wants people to think that. Plot twist. Plot twist. He ain't no dead fuck. No, he's really uh, the horror film Ron Jeremy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Frank, she's spreading the STDs around, kind of like Coachella. <laughs> I can feel your anger. I got that fan right over there. Do you? Behind. Yeah, I got oh, a nice. super, yeah, fan. Look at him. <laughs> Rejection, ladies and gentlemen. She's just like, damn, I'm stuck. This sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but nothing happens because doesn't doesn't she like fuck off chucky buddy two dollar super chat who's the hot girl you guys like in this well chrissy the lead the blonde um she's definitely hot and this girl we dave and i have been talking about mine would yeah mine would be her this, the one that's already girl. dead yeah she's definitely if, if you're into necroph- necrophilia folks this is it <laughs> Oh, dude, that's right. I forget. He gets, like, harpooned out of the fucking lake and shit. Oh. Right? Yes. Does he need something like that? Like, Jason, like, does that type of shit to him? Yeah, I'm looking this guy's I name. I added the sound actually. effect in. I know what is this guy's effect. name? Paul. No, 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 his real name. Oh, I don't know. Because he looks familiar to me. Yeah. He's going over there. Uh, what is his name? Oh. Yeah, David. Part six didn't have any nudity because I don't remember Megan getting naked and uh, the chick that has sex with Travolta's nephew. Um, mm-hmm. You don't see anything but the lower part of her body, but even that, you don't see anything. You see him top, but yeah, no, there is nothing in part six. You start swimming? Hey, I guess he's not in a necrophilia. That's too bad. Paul, Clyde Hayes. Clyde Hayes. Paul, Clyde you're Hayes. about to get tossed. He's getting it. He's getting it. Oh. oh. Yeah, with the harpoon, that's right. Oh. Sandra's brother's like, all right, I'm going to save the day now. Fuck. I'm Mr. Mountain Man. Oh, I'm Mr. Mountain Man. Dude, he does. He kind of looks like the brawny man <laughs> with that shirt tucked in and shit. I'm going to kill you. Just have him like standing there like this. Yeah, that's right. Come here, Jason. I'm going to tear you apart. <laughs> I'm going to tear you apart, Jason. <laughs> Fuck. I will say the deaths in these movies. Is, this one is good. I mean, they're they're typical '80s gags, but they're good. I think yeah. didn't Tom Savini come back for this one too? Right. I did. Savini do this one? I he think might he have came back for this. Yeah, he might have actually. I think you're right. Yes, yes, I think you're right. I always like that shot. I'm coming around the corner with a machete. It's like, well, who, who's this? Who's this? Oh, yeah, that's right. Jason it. broke the shotgun. Oh, it's his so kid. That's would, right. You, you, would leave the, you would leave the tent with a machete and not bring your shotgun. Okay. Or, plot twist, it was Tommy. Tommy, Tom, yes, he's got us. He's got he's got like a split personality thing, and I always thought that that like that it looks like looked a like the psycho house. house? Well, a combination oh. of a dollhouse and a psycho house. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And it definitely is out of place for Crystal Lake. You know what I mean? They should have went a little more cottagey. Yeah, yeah. Like the house where the Jarvis lives. You know that, right. that feels like a Crystal Lake house. Right, right. Of course, now this is when Crispin gets one of the Crispin Glover looks things. like very awkward here. <laughs> he plays the role so well. Yeah, tapping into the George McFly laugh there. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it 
dude, he crushes that character. He oh, yeah. totally crushes it. I mean, what yeah. they did to him, man, it's fucked up. Yeah. This is this is like Teddy's all alone now. This is not a tra- this is not like a turn on. One more for Teddy. <laughs> Epic failure. And this, my friends, would be called a stag film, right? These old black and white nudie films. Yeah, something like they that. Yeah. Back in the day, stag films. I was there. Stag films Sends in a two dollar super chat. Horror. Thanks very much. Tina. Tina. Tina, we got to go. I'm gonna leave without you. Crispin should have just been like, get out of here, you fucking dead fuck. Boy, you just think this came out in 84, right? 84, yeah. This came out the same year Nightmare on Elm Street came out. Yep, Elm Street. God, the 80s, yeah. man. The we'll 80s never Gremlins. see like that horror again. Gremlins was 84. I think Gremlins not was like 84. The, yeah. Not like to the level it was back then, anyways. No. It'll be a different no. type. Well, yeah, it's things evolve, right? You know, it's like that old saying, once you leave, you can't go back. And it just, things are, things evolve, you know? I mean, but it's crazy to think that there are, and kids who are even around today, who aren't even kids, maybe in their late teens, early 20s. That, that It's funny, I there's a, there's a channel on YouTube that I just discovered. I don't know how old these guys are. They're British. I, I like that. I like that. That's a, that's a, that's a very Hitchcock, a very Hitchcock uh, kill. Oh, the off off camera. You don't off see camera, it. but in the in the in the illumination of the lightning. Yep. I really like that. Okay, now not so much Hitchcock. But, <laughs> now but the it was kill like, was or Hitchcock into Friday. <laughs> That's right. But there's this YouTube channel. I forget the name of it now. Maybe some of the people in the chat have seen it. Um, I stumbled upon it like a week or so ago. I was looking for something else, and I just came across it. Uh, two young British guys. Um, I don't know how old they are. I guess in their maybe mid to late twenties. I'm not sure. Maybe they're older than that. I don't know. But it's uh, they watch. Uh, they've been watching a lot of classic horror movies for the first time, films that they've never seen, and they show it like they show them watching the movie. They're on two sides of the screen, and you can actually see the movie. I guess they really don't care about uh, uh, monetization or anything, or how they get around that. But anyway, they. Sorry. How come we can't do that? Well, like I said, I, I think I don't think like they they we we we'd, we'd be dinged, we'd be dinged, yeah. because I already get dinged because of the name of it. Like, for those of you that don't know, this 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 uh, this show is never monetized. You can always never... push the title, dude, to BS. If you want yeah, to. but I don't want to do that. Fuck that. No, yeah. fuck YouTube. I don't care. It's two dudes and some bullshit. It's not two dudes and some BS. And then you know, YouTube's algorithms are probably like oh, BS means bullshit. Mm. Gotta fucking do that. And it's just like fuck off. Mm, bullshit. Mm, that's a naughty word. And it's like for YouTube, fucking somebody needs a punch in the head. Like sometimes people just need punches in the head. Sometimes <laughs> there are people in this world that need to get a fucking punch in the head. It's just true. Like Luke Skywalker to New Hope. A lot of people anyway, like that right now. yeah, there are. So, um, but anyway, there's this channel, and they sit and they watch it, and it's fun to watch them watching movies that we grew up with that we absolutely love and seeing their reaction yeah, to it reaction to it yeah. yeah and sometimes it's it's you know there are certain movies they watch that we hold dear to our hearts that just because of the age difference that they find funny or they find like you know but funny enough uh they do they, they seem like pretty mature guys and they actually appreciate a lot of the the thing. They they do appreciate a lot. Like I, they they've done Poltergeist, Elm Street, Halloween, uh, The Exorcist, The Omen, and uh, I forget the name of the channel. But I it's think a, I know who you're good... talking about. I've seen them pop up on my recommendations. Yeah, I think I know it's. About. I th- they they don't look young like teenagers, but I don't think they're not. They can't be that old to have never seen these movies. Um, and uh, it's just fun to watch them see it for the first time and to see things happen in the movie that they're like. You know, and um, uh, it's so odd though. It's with a lot of the younger kids that I talk to about these, you know, unless they're horror fans, but you know, if they're not, if they're just fans of movie in general, and they're just yeah. like, you know, when I was growing up, you know, my parents, you know, especially my dad, he really exposed me to a lot of the black and white films, the Hitchcock films, and yeah, uh, the Bogart films, the Cagney films, the 
you know, my girl back there, Hepburn films and stuff. Like yep. I never yep. laughed. I always appreciated that. I always appreciated yep. the cinema um, from my parents' generation. And then of course yep. this being our generation. Yeah. I never looked at it as cheapy or, you know, I just always looked at like, you know, Dracula and Frankenstein and mm-hmm. the monster movies of, of that era. And then the, the horror well, it's films because you were given the opportunity space. to have that appreciation. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I never took it for granted or never thought, like, oh, this is lame. Like, you know, like, right. I remember the first time I saw the thing from outer space, and I, you know, I was probably almost, if not the same age as, um, oh, my God, what's Lindsay Wallace, the girl's name in real life? Oh, um, fucking uh, Kyle Richards. Kylie, thank you, yeah. I was probably close to the same age as her when she's watching it in the original Halloween, and I fucking right. loved the thing from outer space. So, yeah. um that's cool that they 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 are appreciating our films and not really mocking it because I come across a lot come across no a lot not of at all not mock at all. our you know films and music from our era and it's just like I well and doing I get, that shit. no I didn't because I had older I grew up with an appreciation for it but I can understand why some kids would you know for some kids today watching this movie would be like it's painful for it. like I remember when my buddy Bruce. Uh, he sat. He tried to get his kids to watch The Goonies, and they had no interest. They were like, "What the fuck is this?" Oh, that's because like to, hearing that, it's just like I know. Oh, it's a knife but, in the heart. <laughs> but to them, watching a movie from the '80s would be like us watching a movie from the '50s. Now, now, having said that, depending on how you grew up and what you were uh, exposed to as a kid, you could True. have an appreciation we, for it, right? We were very exposed to cinema and music. Right. Of but if you eras, if you've yeah. only grown up with modern cinema and modern entertainment, and then you try to watch a movie that's 40 years old or 35 years old, you know, it, yeah, it, I, I get it. I, it'd be like me watching a movie from the 40s when I was that age or, you know, the 50s. Be like, what the fuck is this? It's hilarious. You know, I mean, obviously I didn't have that reaction, and, and um, but a, I, I get it. Like, I totally under, understand it, and it's kind of funny. You know, it's all relative. And then, you know, fast forward 40 years from now, there will be people watching Insidious and The Conjuring that, you know, at, yeah. in, in the year 2050 going, well, this is how Blame. old this movie is. Holy shit. Have you guys seen The Conjuring from 2013? Man, that's an old movie. You know, how was it? It was okay. <laughs> you know, like you, you like you will. Like, it's just because well, by yeah, then- in the future is going to become fucking reality. Well, I'm just going to, by then, how we consume our entertainment will be different. It'll be very virtual reality, VR. We'll be like in the movie or like, it'll be a very different world. Sure, sure so, adventure. So, and I'm not saying that because that's the Halloween thing. I'm just saying that that's yeah, probably yeah. like. It'll be like, so you had to take a disc and put it in, what was it called? A Blu-ray? Okay. Yeah. You know, like. Well, I'm still trying to think, how are you going to get more advanced than digital? Like, what are you going to do to top that? Oh, like, it won't. It won't. It'll go VR. VR yeah, is the next step. Me, yeah. 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 VR is next. And it's already there. What the hell are you doing here? I, I want to have sex with you right now. All right, fine. You can limp there, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It did, did kind of look like What are you doing in my fucking Yeah, shit? he should be like, what the fuck? Come on, you mother. Can we have sex? Oh, okay, I guess so. <laughs> I gotta take. I keep saying this. I gotta take some of these movies. Nineteen eighty movies, though, right? That's true. It's true. Know each other. Let's just bang. Yeah, that's true. Wonder how long he lasted. How long do you guys think Crispin Glover's character lasted here? Ten minutes. You see, ten minutes. You're going ten. I'm I'm giving Crispin ten. You're get. You're going ten. You know what? I'm. I'm. I'm not. I'm going. I'm going. uh, I'm going a minute. One minute. One minute. Chat room. What is it? How long did he last? Tony says 10. I say one. one. Some of them say three minutes. 13, 13 minutes from the shape, man. Two pump, pump chumps is Dr. Splinter. <laughs> uh, I know. I'm not, I'm not feeling it. I think he's, he, he might be more in line with the less than a minute man. And at the beginning of Halloween, but you know what's funny. Um, I've talked with girls and girls find it insulting. If a guy goes too long, they get really, girls get really insecure about that shit. Because they don't think they're good enough. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I think it's a, yeah. I, you're I was talking thinking, about that up at the uh, the cottage. Uh, I think the, it depends yeah. on the girl, and I think it depends on the le- like, you know, the, the communication you have with the person and things like. That. I get what you're saying, though. Yeah, I get what you're saying. But. Oh, this dude is still watching that stag. Film. Well, yeah, it's Teddy, man. Come on. Oh, this is when Crispin gets it. That's right. 
Yeah, this is uh, Ted. Where's the cork screw? <laughs> Look at that. See, but he's so drunk. He, if he wasn't drunk he's right now, if Teddy, he, he'd be livid. He'd be he's livid. High. What's that? Is he smoking weed? Oh, maybe it's smoking weed. Maybe he's just really high. Maybe that's. Of course, it. no yeah. one acts like that when they're stoned. He's but acting. He was, he's acting more drunk than he is acting high. He is. If he wasn't under the influence, he'd be livid. Hey, Ted, where's the cork screw? It's the way he says it. Tabitha Short coming in hard with it. It doesn't matter how long the guy lasts as long as the girl gets off first. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> and the cork screw for the wine bottle. Ted. A That's Ted. what I mean. Like, oh, yeah. Here it comes. This is so great. With the it's a great kill. It's it's a great kill. Right to the face, dude. Kill. Here it comes. Oh, here it is. Yep. Oh, oh. He's got a meat cleaver right in his forehead. <laughs> Woo! Oh, yes, ladies and gentlemen. I love it. Doesn't oh, doesn't she get, she get thrown out the window, the window here? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. get thrown out the window. <gasps> How many on there? Here it comes. Oh, yeah, he's out on the roof, like on the landing there or whatever. Warren Armour. Please, please tell me why they run towards creepy sounds in a horror movie. Uh, it's just the formula of every horror film. Because if they didn't, the credits would roll as soon as the at the beginning credits ended. That's <laughs> true. And a dude, the dude, uh, dude did this stunt. He's in the oh. Crystal Lake memoir. What? Um, so that's a dude there. That's a dude who does hitting the, the car. It's a practical stunt. It's a wow. real stunt, but it was a dude who did it. Wow, that's a dude. That's a that's a sexy dude right there hitting the car. <laughs> I think if you actually slow it down in super super slow motion and yeah. pause it, you can see the hair on the dude's legs. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. That's great. I love it. I love that kind of shit. Good for him, man. That's great. Dude looks like a lady. Yeah. There you dude, go. dude looks like a lady. Oh, a little bit of exposition here. Just hanging out in the camp. They should just have sex. See, they should they just have sex. They should. They both I want to. He shows the, a sketch drawing of of based on Alice's um, what she saw in the newspaper clippings and see that's what tommy jarvis should have had in, in almost at halloween five mm. friday five you know the fact that tommy's got this fucking pork like who who snapped that shot of jason and you know yeah, and, i and, i get like, you I, like that made they should have just stuck with that as the only known photograph of jason which is a sketch artist uh, right drawing based on alice's uh you know how she described yeah. what he looked the boy looked like I get you. I, I get never you. understood that with as much as I love my Roy Burns, man. I never understood how Tommy got a photo of him. Neil Tambo says, Dave and Tony, do you feel Trish doesn't get enough credit as a, as a final girl? Well, we were talking three. about this earlier and I was saying, no, I think she gets for me personally, because this is really, really Tommy's story. Uh, and, and, you know, Tommy's really the one, that, the glue that brings it together at the end. Trish is a final girl for all intents and purposes Perfect. because she's right. the final girl that's left, which is what a final girl is, obviously. But I, I don't know, because whenever I think of Friday 4, I never think of Trish. I always yeah. think of, of Tommy and, and Crispin Glover. And so, so I don't, but when I think of like Friday 2, I think of Amy Steele. You know, when I think of Friday 1, I think of Adrian King, right? Yeah. Right. When or I man, think of uh, Jennifer Cook and Friday Six, right, exactly, and Tommy as well. I think of Tom of Matthews Tom. as well. But this is really, it's not, it's not the, yeah, it's a bit different the way the the story is structured and the way they they have Tommy's arc and now you know. So I I don't I for me I think she is perfectly placed. I think because I, you know, but that's me. Teddy. It's a fucking loser. This guy's a fucking loser. This guy's a dead fuck. I'm just saying. Still watching his stag film. That's what he's doing. Drinking That's his what he's doing, ladies and gentlemen. Smoking his weed. Yep. For those that are wondering, we are uh, one hour and, well, basically an hour and five minutes into the movie. 
damn, what do we got? Like 20 minutes left? Yeah, like something like that. 25 minutes left. It's fucking moving well, actually, like a clip. It slowed down a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was kind of cooking along there, but now it's like... This is a good kill, though. Through the movie screen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Back of the head. See the blood coming down. A lot of penetration kills in this where he's going through the body, you know? Um, yes. The girl yeah. laying out in the lake on the raft. A lot of penetration in this movie. You're a lot right. Of penetration in this movie. There's a, there's a lot more so. There's... Oh! Penetrated through the back of the head there. Yeah, there's there's good creative kills. You know, I will say that about Friday Four. There's very good creative yep. kills. Yeah. But yeah, I take nothing away from the actress who plays uh, whatever Chris is that her name in this Chris. I always I keep forgetting. Jesus, you guys just Kimberly, told me this. isn't it? Kimberly, whatever. Yeah, Kimberly. Um, you know, but yeah, I would definitely put Amy Steele and Jennifer Cook, and probably, I mean, I know Adrian King. I, I don't know, and just I don't know. I mean, I like her, but then I don't like her. I have mixed emotions. She's fine, about but She's I think fine. I, I, think I, I the... mix emotions about her. That's all. I love the film Friday the Thirteenth, my second favorite in the franchise. But uh... I think, as far as you think, you're in love. I know, the right? The fuck is wrong with you? Run, Calm down, run, dude, run! Calm That's down! Thing. Holy Bro, shit! That is a Stage five clinger alert right Calm there. Calm down. Holy, Holy Jesus yeah. Christ. <laughs> Calm down. I think you're in love because you just had a had a shower sex. Bro, you got to Forrest Gump that shit in. Run. He's got he's got to get the fuck out of there right now. He's, he's, he's got to run right now. Like, that's just ridiculous. I forget how. Not now, girlfriend. I know how he gets it. I forget I, how she gets have it. You ever, have you ever, well, I'm assuming you've told your girlfriend you're with. Now you love her, but how many girls have you actually told you love? <laughs> Wait, no, we've been together for years. Never said that. <laughs> that uh, would be kind of fun. How many, like, how many girls have I told I love them? Uh, I'm going through it in my two, mind maybe, too right two, now. Two, maybe two or three like, over the years, maybe? Because I've been in a couple of long-term relationships. So yeah. uh, maybe two, two or three, two. I'm three, in that maybe? three. Three, yeah, something it. like that, and it was and two. Genuine, I know, sure. you know, at the at the time, One, you know, I don't know. I was I, that that was my high school sweetheart. I mean, it was a love, but it was a very young love. I, right. I, you know, I my what I understand of it now as an adult versus as to a teenager is, is way different. So, oh yeah, is, but two I know for sure they were, yeah. I was, they were my adult. This is year. a good kill. Oh yeah, yeah, and Again, I love the way his mask looks the, here too. The way he's like smushing his head and you kind of see his mask and it looks all like on an angle and it just looks very organic and oh, oh, oh. I'm telling you, Jason was oh, penetrating through shit in this movie, fuck. man. Now look at that. I love seeing that. Blo oh, look at that. Oh, oh, oh. His face looked like this. It was great. She's Loved blow drying it. her hair. Careful, yep. girl. You don't want to get caught in surveillance. <sighs> yeah, that's right. Surveillance. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You got to throw some comedy and shit from time to time and laugh. It's good to laugh. You need to laugh. This girl's just, look at her way she's walking. She's, I think yeah, I'm in I love. On her. Just Somebody so run. Think, oh, man, fuck. <laughs> she's pretty too, but you know, like, listen, we just met. We just had shower sex. Calm down. All right? Calm down. See what your love did? You see what he did? Your love killed a man? He took his own life right there. <laughs> that's what she's thinking right now. She's probably thinking, right? I oh, killed. because I said I think I'm in love? Yeah, that's it, Tony. That's right. <laughs> oh, that's right. She gets the axe. Get the axe. Yes, this is a good kill. Oh, that's a good kill. That's Only good. Right through the door. Yeah, yeah, that's a good kill. I like that kill. That was a good kill. So they're all dead now, right? Except for, wait. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all dead yeah, now. His brother's still alive. Uh, Tommy's obviously alive. His sister's still alive. Yes, yeah, yeah. But I meant the, the group of kids. The group of kids are all dead now, I think. Well, kids, you know, the... Teenagers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're all, they're all dead now, I think. Yeah. That are grown yeah, adults. It's hard to see her find. See, it's hard to see her. And here's what it is, too. She's separated from the main pack of the group. So it's hard for me to look at this, to, to see Trish as a final girl, even though, like I said, from a certain point of view, she is. But she's not part of the kids 
she's like she's she's not in the movie very much. Yeah, until so I was you just get, about to say, there's not enough screen time with her. She's yeah, good. I enjoy she's good, her character. I like her, but she's uh-huh. not the central focus. And when you do come back to them, Tommy's more like Tommy feels like they're setting Tommy up to have more of an important role than than Trish. Sure. Trish is just there to, I don't know. If she had been one of the girls at the camp or like in the cabin with the other kids, you know. I know that cabin's there, but didn't they build this one for the, this is a set house, right? They built Yeah, they did build one. Yes, they did. Because the house that they, the, the, the the Jarvis house is still there to this day. Cause I think I saw Adam, the woo do a video there and Mm, other videos there. The ax to the door. I love you. I love that you can. I love that you can still hear the real going. Yeah, it's so great. I was the real monitor in fifth and sixth grade. Ooh, where are you now? I had to set it up and yep. take it down. Very that cool. Was the job of, oh, and rewind it. That was the job of the real monitor. Mm, very cool. Not what really. It's probably here? a dorky thing to do, but whatever. Yep. Of course, you need this guy in the movie because he's the one that's like, Jason's still alive, damn it. You need that guy. You need that guy in every movie. You know, you need a guy in every movie that's like, Jason's still alive. In the first two well, movies, it was Ralph. To his kill here, which is, it's a very it's a great intense kill. kill. Yeah, it's a great kill. Very intense. He's screaming for his life and shit. Ooh, and out, out goes the projector. I'll be right, right here. Back. I'll be right back. You're dead. Just stay here. You broke the rule. You're dead. I'm going down here to fight Jason with a pocket knife. Like, <laughs> right? Don't you think? Like, don't you think? He had a like, machete like five minutes ago. I don't know what the hell happened to that. I was just hey. gonna say he's a Jason expert. Let's say, right? He knows because he's on the hunt because he believes he's alive still, and he goes into the fucking basement with a kitchen knife. Like what? Why would what? the 80s man we didn't dude question. i'd be go- i'd be going down with a shotgun i'd be i know i'd be going down with a chainsaw i would be going down with a chainsaw that's what i'd be doing shit i'd be fucking duct taping the shit out of that shotgun <laughs> that too yep oh yeah 100 percent. like this is just insane it's insane ry guy 88 says dave do your impression of walking hello, hello. why are uh, you going down to the rabbit. stairs the stairs with a knife the knife is, is sharp. The knife Yo, sharp. My car is running out like that, freaked out. That means that's my cue to get the fuck out. It's your cue to get out. There's this uh, video on YouTube. You got to check it out. It's uh, these cats. They <laughs> sense an earthquake before it happens. It's funny because they're all asleep. It's like 12 yeah. in this room. They're all asleep. And then all of a sudden, like five to seven seconds before the earthquake hits, they all get alert to this fucking earthquake. They're all like freaking out. And then yeah, it happens. Yeah. And then it's even funnier. Oh, yeah. Watching them as the earthquake happens, that's, they're trying to scramble to save. That's engine. great. I'd like. I'll. I'll, I'll take a look it's at that. Crazy how animals can fucking sense oh, yeah. danger before yep. it actually happens. Yep, it's wild. It could have maybe warned us about 2020. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, my cat did did tell me something, but I just didn't believe I her. Talk, she's just loving and give me loves every day, and I'm like, yeah. could have warned me. You know what's what the Sense this shit. Oh yeah. Jason sounds like Jason sounds like Christopher Walken. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hello, Trish. Get out. Get out now. I'm going to kill you with a knife. Come on. Come on. All right. When Tommy goes full <laughs> method and transfers in. See, like this drawing. This is the drawing that Tommy should have taken with him, kept it in his pocket, to have all these years later. That should have been the only drawing he he didn't need to have the, the portrait <laughs> right of Jason as an adult. No, no, exactly. <laughs> <by a> photographer. <laughs> yeah. 80s horror, folks. Yep, 80s horror. Like even watching this movie, I don't feel I, I'm not emotionally attached to Trish. Like I really couldn't care less whether she died. But you could have if they gave her just a bit more story arc. Yes, yes. Yeah. Or if she was the last remaining member of the group of kids. You know what I mean? And she, like, yes. But yeah. here, I'm just like, I, I don't care. This is great the way that looks. The blood and hanging on the wall there and shit. I like that. That's good shit. <laughs> she got a good scream. Yeah. 
Oh, she's got the machete. She's got. Why would why would she have it? Well, I guess because he wanted to protect her upstairs. Oh, of course, he's got to get stuck at, at this, this, of this moment. Get stuck. Create the tension. There's I know. Story. Like, what the hell? I could imagine teenagers in the 80s watching this. Run! Yep. Oh, Run! See? Run! Kill me! Oh, I mean, that's, that's so frightening. Man, it's frightening. It's frightening. Yeah, it is. It's it's frightening. That's frightening. Run! He's killing me! And look at him just going down. Boom! Boom! I mean, you know, he really didn't put up much of a fight, though. No, he didn't. And he's a big guy. You think he could have fucking he, fought back? Kind of. You know, I'm like, hey, bro. <laughs> like... Yeah, why would she go, go back, back down? down? But why though? Like you don't. Okay, you haven't fucked him. He's not your boyfriend. You just met him like I don't know an hour you ago. Got a brother who could be in danger right now. Exactly. And you go down. Come on, you deserve to die. That's why I don't give a shit about her. Final girl. She ain't no final girl. I, yeah, I don't get the whole why she went back down thing. She, I, she should have gone out the house. Well, she went back Jason down. Chased, you know, went after her. Yeah. The like, Just so that, Jason that could grab sense. her leg. Oh, there's the double mint twin. Yeah. I saw some double mint gum by her leg there. <laughs> oh, and Crispin's hanging up there like How the Christ. fuck does he have time to set all these people up? He's Jason is fucking busy. He's an artist, man, with his kills. Or man. does he have an accomplice? Is and Mrs. Voorhees dead no, or is she alive? It's Tommy. It's Tommy. It's Tommy. I'm telling you, man. You're a little bit too young to, to nail Crispin to the door like that. Well, that's true. That's true. Yeah. I like the way he comes in here and the look on Corey Feldman's face when um jason breaks through the door the look on Corey feldman's face is like it feels genuinely like oh fuck it's such a great look on his face it's coming up in a second like yeah like nails are gonna do anything i'd be running down the street look at this oh All gross right. poll time in the chat room there's 188 of you watching who does it better? Jason walking through the door here like a beast or Dick Warlock walking through the Haddonfield Memorial Hospital entrance Ooh, door? Jason coming through the door here like a beast is pretty fucking good. It is. That's pretty fucking good. Oh, there's... Now, that's the guy. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, he's dead. He, he's deader than a doornail. I know. Ah, <laughs> but I'm bumped. We got Watch Jason. This. Oh, we got one oh, for yeah. Dick. Yeah. Oh, hitting it. Oh, yeah, right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, see, she's earning a bit of her stripes here, right? She's she's fucking taking on the mat. She is. She she's is earning, earning it. Oh, girl stripes. What's that? Sorry. She's earning her final go uh, girl. She is. Final. Oh, look at that. Right through the door. Yeah, right through look the door. at his face. Like a fucking beast, man. Corey Feldman's oh, face was like, oh, the door in the hospital is good, too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, it is. It is. Of course it is. Nothing wrong with it. But this, that, like, but it's different, right? Like, Warlocks was was very just sort of, you know, this is, Jason Warlocks has more brawn, you know, more, more, more beast-like. Right? He, yeah, exactly. Where Warlock, dude, he just kind of glided through that shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Which is, it's, they're two different types of scary. Ding, 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 ding. I'm looking forward to watching that. Ding, 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 ding. Watching what? Uh, Halloween 2. Mmm. Halloween, two, un, two, trois, quatre, cinq, deux. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Is this some kind of Halloween prank? I've been trick-or-treated to death. You don't know, you don't know what death is, you fucking loser. <laughs> I'm half in the bag. I gotta chase this son of a bitch down because I knew he wouldn't die after I shot him six times. He starts running down the sidewalk and he's naked all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> like Loomis? The fuck, the fuck is Loomis? Six times. <laughs> yeah. Loomis, what's going on? I shot him six times. Loomis, where are your fucking clothes? I don't know. <laughs> That's it. I don't know. <laughs> oh, the TV on the head. Yes. Yes. He's lying on the ground. He's pulling. He does his. Yeah. 
Oh, he moves a little bit so they know that he's still alive. Now listen to me, Tommy. I want you to go down the street. I want you to go down the street to the McKenzie's house. And I want you to tell them to call the police and tell them to send them over here. Okay? Cut! Wrong movie! Oh, yeah, yeah wrong, wrong, wrong movie. <laughs> Sorry. I thought we were paying tribute. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> I've never been crazy on, although, it's just Jason. The, the way Ted White, he gets up and he does one of those, like, like he doesn't know who to go after. I don't know. It just looks a little weird to me. Like, I don't know. Looks kind of like I, I don't know. I'm the whole oh. change too. I, I wish they had kept him in the part two outfit. There he is. Yeah. See, so he's like, oh, I don't know who to go after, huh? 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 I don't. Know. It just seems a little like he would. It seems unlike Jason because Jason, I don't think, would naturally go after the child. I think that he would naturally go after the older one. Right. Right. Of course. Yeah. Jason. And Jason's run. running. Jason man. always run, folks, because he did run in part two. He did. Yeah, he did. It's my. I love this shot. Did he yeah. run? Oh, yeah. The silhouette of him the in the silhouette door. Silhouette in the doorway. Fucking right. Yeah! Did he run in three? Did he yeah. run in three? Uh, maybe a little bit. I don't know. I can't really remember. It's good shit. Man, Jason got some Obama ears going on with fucking with the mask like that. It's like sticking out and shit. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. Now, is this a guy, too? as well too i think it's the same guy who does the other stunt geez that's a the feminine person. looking guy if you guys really look at it slowly when they, they you see the land you can right. actually see the mat you, but you, but like, he's got the he's got like the curves in the right places it's strange yeah. you know like it's you know he's got that wow I, to, I would never have guessed i would have thought it was a stunt woman and uh totally believable yeah and you can see the padded mat like below when when they land Yep, for sure. Uh, this is when Corey goes full method. Yeah, this is when he actually doesn't shave his head. Because you he can tell he's wearing a bald cap. But it works. Like, it's good enough that it, I believe. Like, right now, he's wearing a wig. When he starts to cut his hair, he's totally wearing a wig. Oh, yeah, no, he's not cutting his hair for real. No, no. Jason! Die! Die! It's coming up. It's supposed to lay, Tommy. See, I think Jason should have come through that wall and grabbed her. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you think you got some there, bitch? Dun, 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 dun. That's it, man. See, I, I want them to bring back this Friday music. I know it's dated, but... Ooh, yeah! Look at that, dude. For my fan film, I'm bringing this fucking music back. I, That's dude, the way to do it. Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, not That's dated way to at do all. It. This is the the mood and at, like, it's like Halloween's theme. You you yeah. need you know the stock theme, the the Lori theme, like that's, that's it. what I gives the uh, the identity to Halloween. And same thing with Friday that's the Thirteenth. I just noticed that Jason went. Argh! Like he he, he he like he 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 felt that pain, yeah. He felt that pain there. Look at her so, fighting; so she's fighting. Jason, Jason. Yes, yes. Wouldn't it have been awesome if they like started to play Michael Jackson's "Man in the Mirror"? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny. Good. Oh, that would be hilarious. I can feel your anger. Strike me down with all of your hatred and your journey towards the dark the side will be complete. So it could have worked. What's that? I, I believe that was on the Thriller album, right? Man in the Mirror? I can't remember. Maybe. I think that's later, actually. Well, no, it's not on the Bad album. Oh, then, it, then maybe it is. Maybe it is. Admittedly, I can't remember. Here it comes. This is great. And off comes the mask. Oh! The mask is off. And look at Jason. Here it comes. The machete drops. He looks back. I have mixed motions on this. I personally like Gillette's look with the hair. Yeah, yeah. I that look of Jason. Well, maybe he went to the barber, you know? 
<laughs> got hair, hair got cut. haircut you know he knew he was going to be getting this match. i need to go tony michael style just shave it off that's it that's it super chat comes in from cobra dojo says D- oh it didn't say oh right, i'm just yeah, hold on right in the noggin here it comes i always look at this oh right through the brain oh <laughs> oh that's some good juicy stuff there that's some good juicy stuff. Cobra Dojo says, d and do you watch YouTuber Decker Shado? Decker Shadow? Decker Shado? I've never heard of him. YouTubers. Yeah, I don't Although watch I too many people. The past four months or so is the most YouTube that I've watched because it's been very oh, yeah. entertaining. Who's De- Decker? <laughs> I've, n- I've, 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 I've never heard of them. So, uh, no, I yeah. can't say that I have. Or maybe I have and I didn't, didn't no, know it. I don't know. What- I've never heard of them. Corey but I mean, like, if I saw the channel, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I've seen that person and just didn't know what the name was. He's about to go OJ Simpson on Jason. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Die! And isn't he just hitting, like, a bunch of, like, mats here? I think he's hitting just, like, mats or something or, like, bags of something. Tommy! I'm just going to stand here and let you do it and not bother to stop you. Well, he does have a machete in his hand. See, this would have been interesting if if t- oh, if they actually. Yes. Definitely, it would make more sense than like the Jamie Lloyd route that people talked about, like Jamie Lloyd, you know, at the end of four. Like, mm-hmm. I just can't picture Daniel Harris being a serial killer. I mean, it's right, not right. Like or, or a diss or anything, but Tommy, yeah, I can believe that. You know what I mean? And. And honestly, I mean, I, I mean, I love Roy. Roy, 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 Roy is my dude, you know, Roy Burns is, you know, I love that dude. I love doing photo shoots with that guy. But, um, if they had gone the Tommy Jarvis route in part five, that definitely would have been an interesting, very, it very, would have been. Interesting, you know? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Right now, what you need is rest. It was on the bad 25 album, man in the mirror. Thank you. DMT infinity. Hmm. Ethan LeBlanc sends in a super chat, says, between Michael and Jason, Michael got the looks. That's true. And he's got the walk. He's got the walk. (laughs) No, we're not talking about that, Michael. Um, I love this look, too, with Tommy at the door. It's just kind of eerie. It is. It's almost alien-like. setting up that Tommy's going to become the killer. Yeah. Yeah, it's very alien-like. And when he hugs her, doesn't he open her eyes? And it's just like, you get this kind of weird look from him. yeah, here it comes. Here it comes. Yep. And they pause on it. Here it comes. Hear the sound effect. See? (sighs) You do mean, like... If Tommy Jarvis was the fake Jason in part five, I would not have... I mean, again... That would have been great. It would have. It would have. And it would have made perfect sense. Yep. I don't know why they didn't do that. Why they didn't go the the, yeah, because it because it, it it's believable then. Definitely, you know, it it carries over. It's like, yeah, I mean, he's I the Roy Burns, and you know, being pissed off that someone killed his kid. I understand that, but yeah, it would yeah. have made you're right. It totally would have made more sense to do Tommy Jarvis as the killer. Hundred percent, folks. That was Friday the Thirteenth, Part Four, the <laughs> final chapter, nineteen eighty. Four. Amazing. That was a lot of fun, man. That was a lot of fun. Let's head over to the chat room and see what you guys are saying. We'll take some Q&A for a little bit. What's that, sorry? I think there was a few supers that came in, Super Chat. Uh, Oh, there were. I think we got them, though, as far as I know. I think we got them. uh, Oh, no, no. There's some here I didn't get. So let's go back and get some of the ones we did not get. There was back that when we were were answering them, but... um... One that got overlooked, and it was... Well, there's a couple here. There's one here from Jeff Harris, and says, Imagine JR doing a commentary for the kills in this movie. Keep up the work, you guys. <laughs> the carnage! Oh, the carnage! He's broken him in half! He's broken, <laughs> broken him in half! Stone Cold! It's Stone Cold! <laughs> it's Jason! It's Jason! Chuck M O five zero three says, Tommy Jarvis and his masks, I believe, were a bit of an homage to Tom Savini. I think you are correct, actually. Yes. Uh, the Shape Man sends in a $5 super chat and says, In New York around 1960, a girl was stabbed to death at midnight while walking home. 30 neighbors heard her scream, He's stabbing me. He's killing me. Oh my God. That's, that's fucking scary. That's frightening. That's genuinely frightening. 
Uh, okay, we're caught up in the super chats. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, go ahead there. Kenny five two five. You still want to see Jeepers Creepers? Yeah, I don't know, man. That's that. I know Dave and I have talked about that. There's just, I don't know. It's that's a, that's a tough one to do because there's so much bullshit surrounding that movie that makes. Yeah. That's why I don't do the character. Believe me, guys, I want to do the character for photo shoots. I live in the area that's perfect for this shit. And it's like, right. I know what's going to come with it. And I just don't need that. I don't need to bring bullshit to my doorstep. You know what I mean? In 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 the culture that, especially in the culture that we're in now. Yeah. I, just, I don't need to, to, to bring that. And just, it, it sucks. You know what I mean? It takes nothing away from long. And I forget the actress's name that played uh, next to him in the film. Um, yeah. And the character, the the, the monster that cre- they created, but what that fuck tart director did, I, it's hard for me personally to look past it. I don't know about you. Yeah, you know, no, it is for those of you that may not know the the director of all three Jeepers Creepers film and the director of the '90s movie Powder as well. Uh, he's a convicted pedophile, and uh, and not not. I mean, he has admitted it. He's yeah. he's a convicted pedophile. It's just um, so it's it's now I'm some past it. Yeah, I, I'm somebody that. Um, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't know. It's for me, I, I can separate, uh, art and, and the person, like, I mean, I know that there were, um, you know, I, I think they're like, and again, I don't want to get, I, I, I don't want to go down a rabbit hole, but let's just say that, you know, like for example, in regards to Michael Jackson, right. Um, you know, I, I do think there's some unusual things with Michael Jackson, but, I can certainly still listen to his music and enjoy the music for what it is. I can watch Kevin Spacey in a movie and enjoy his talent, even though he's a scuzz sucking piece of crap, Mm -hmm. you know? And I think we sometimes forget that just because somebody is, is exceptionally talented doesn't always mean that they're a wonderful human being. There are a lot of amazingly talented people in this world, like fucking amazingly talented people that are scuzz sucking pieces of shit. It's just, it's what it is. I can watch the Cosby show and enjoy it for what it is, even though Bill Cosby is probably one of the biggest serial rapists of all time. I mean, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's now not everybody can do that. Not everybody can do that. Sometimes it's hard for people to separate, you know, art from the person. And, and, and I understand that totally understand that. And there might be, there might be instances in my life where I might, I couldn't do that either, you know, depending on whatever. I mean, it's, it's sort of a, it's, there's a lot of variables at play for me with Jeepers Creepers. I, I, I like the first movie. I, I don't particularly like the other two. I tried watching the third one, and it was just awful. Um, I didn't Agreed. didn't the matter first who was really good though. Yeah, well, yeah, it it is, it is. So I'll I can minus yeah. the shithead. Well, yeah, it's it's well, like as I said, it's a good movie, right? I mean, it, you know, if Hitler says two plus two is four, he's not wrong. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, I'm sure Hitler had a lot of talent with something too, and I'm not trying to be. I, some of my insensitive from Germany and they're great people. I don't associate them with. No, Hitler. I'm not talking about, no, I'm not talking about that. I just mean it, like talking about the real guy, Hitler. Yeah, I, got you, I, I mean, if, 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 if there was a painting that he painted that was fucking, and I, I have no idea, but let's say he did right. Or he drew something that was amazing. Well, that's really fucking good. But Hitler did it. Well, yeah, but it's really good. I mean, it, it, it is. I'm not going to say it's not, if it actually is, you know, it's really good. It's unfortunate who drew it, but I mean, you know, so I think we have a hard time and, and I understand that, um, you know, but, but like I said, I want to shoot that character, but I just, what would come with it? It just, it's not worth the headache. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's no, it is. And, and I think people have to understand too, that especially with Tony and his photography, you know, all it takes is somebody that, you know, is like, you know, you know, you're posting it online and because there's, there, there's no nuance in the world anymore and everybody, it's just, it doesn't exist. Say that I'm, 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 I'm condoning okay it. Victor right. did. I'm totally not okay with it. And of course not. Well, that's because everything's either a 10 out of 10 or it's nothing. Exactly. It's all in. It's or the other. <laughs> no that other. is, that's the thing that bothers me the most, bothers me the most about uh, the changing tides of the world is the removal of context and nuance and uh, context and nuance matters. And, and um, because without it, you just have a, uh, a world that's, black and white but unfortunately life isn't bl- life is full of shades of gray and variables and and things you don't see coming and you have to be able to adapt and roll with the punches and and understand personalities and 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 you know read between the lines it's so important you know to understand those things and 
you know, it just seems like everybody wants to remove that. It's either, no, it's this or it's this. And it's like, yeah, but that, it's not like you can't, you can't do that. You know, there's, there's a lot of variables. So anyway, I, I, I mean, if Tony, I mean, I could probably do it, but I, I have to admit that Jeepers Creepers, although I like that movie, I'm not really in a, it's not a, one of my, oh, I, I could, I couldn't care less whether we ever did it or not, because it's not a movie that I, I don't, it's not one that it's, I'm really like, I love, you know what I mean? So I don't really care if we ever do it. It's a, it's a good movie. I enjoyed it, but I don't think I've watched it in like 15 years. So, you know, but anyway. Hey, on a happier note, Warner Armour says Jesus was a carpenter. And did you know he had a brother named John? Ah, let me get the, uh, oh, I don't know, I dad joke. It was, dad joke. <laughs> it was lame. There you go. Uh, Super Chad comes in from Tommy Ricknell. Thanks, buddy. Says, who else is hyped for the uncut gore footage of Friday Part 2 in the new box set seen for the first time ever? Support physical media for the movies you love. D&T, you're great. Uh, yeah, that'll be fun to see for sure, man. Absolutely. I don't collect physical media anymore. No, I do. But yeah, it's because I like that. I'm going to collect it as long as I can until I'm forced not to. My music on vinyl, but... right. Yes. Yeah. Well, no. yeah, yeah. Uh, Chuck Mo five hundred three says D and T. Either you ever play Friday the Thirteenth video game for the NES? How about the newest one on current consoles? I did play that old one with Purple Jason. Purple Jason. I found it fucking annoying. I could never figure it out. I get there lost and in... yeah, that was a tough game. You know what else was a fucking tough game was the Karate Kid uh, NES game. I could never fucking. Mm. Figure it out. Yeah, that was a tough game. I have I I played a not on the console. I did play a bit of the Jason game. Um, is there a new one that's out now or something, or is it just an extended I, version I of the one that, that the purple one, purple Jason? <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't really played the new one that's out. Kenny five two five all time favorite horror. Uh, mine's The Exorcist. What's yours? I always forget yours. Uh, well, Halloween's my all time favorite horror movie, but The Exorcist is uh, yeah is is amazing. It's probably my. It's it's in my top five, like my top five favorite horror films of all time would probably be Halloween, in no particular order, but like Halloween, Exorcist, Black Christmas, First Elm Street, um, and maybe I don't know. It's a toss between like Rosemary's Baby and mine. I don't know. Exorcist, Halloween, Friday Two, Scream, Nightmare. Mm, that's good. It's a good list. It's a good list. That's a good list. It's a good list. Come on. Nothing. Yeah. Trish, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. Zach Axiola says, Dave, if things with the virus aren't any better next year, then what sounds more likely to you? Halloween Kills being delayed again or a potential VOD release for the film? Well, I think if, if we're in the same position uh, next year as we are right now, I think VOD becomes a more viable option. Oh, I think um, VOD is becoming way more viable. It, a lot of things are going to be interesting after November. Well, viable, <laughs> yeah, viable. You still can't make any money off of it. Yeah, I know. Uh, but... Tenant just made $150 million in the last couple of weeks, and it couldn't have made that on VOD. Um, so it, it, it's making that kind of money because it's in the theater. And, um, I mean, Halloween again is not, it's not a a $300 million movie. Um, I think they, they look for that. I think they do. I think they look at that as, as an option. I don't think they want to delay it again. Um, but I think we won't be in the same position. I mean, theaters are already opening and they are, but again, like it's going to, a lot of interesting things are going to happen over the next year. And I hope calmer days are ahead of us. I hope things do return to normal and, you know, we can all go to the movies next year and enjoy it, but as yeah. right now, I think we we're all kind of like, you know, like yeah, this. yeah, and and it's it's like again, I mean, you don't, I yeah, I I think it becomes a, a a higher probability, but I don't think it's a certainty. I think I think I think people have to understand that. I think it becomes a much higher probability, but I don't think it's a certainty that Halloween Kills will definitely be released on VOD next year if if in the same position. But it becomes a higher probability. But there's various reasons why it still could be an option not to. I hate to say that, but it's true. And um, yeah. I uh, yeah, I think people. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll say that for something else. Um, hey. Anyway, super chat from. Archie Riverdale. Archie Riverdale. 
Hi, Dave. Hi, Tony. I get it. <laughs> sorry, I have, yeah, sorry I have not joined you as of late. That's okay, Archie. But I've been playing World of Warcraft. Oh my God, love it for the Alliance. I've never played it. I don't know what for the Alliance means, but I, I'm glad you are I having a great time. It, but I honestly couldn't tell you anything about it. That's yeah. like when people start messaging me on Instagram about dead, is it dead by daylight? Is that the way I'm saying it properly? I think I so. It's not the horror guys. I know Michael's in there, Ghostface, like, but I've never fucking played it. Oh, are they? I don't know. I've never... It. Yeah. nothing <laughs> literally nothing about it no like my girlfriend and i have just been playing like super mario world and super mario brothers like that's that's kind of like, where i am I right play, now like you you know i've shared my games i play all yep. the old school nes super nes and genesis games and that's it and it's yep. a small collection <laughs> exactly exactly um lee bauer says tony i'm following your instagram love your work with jason michael leatherface and freddie awesome work bud thanks lee appreciate it bud thank you very much lee Thanks, Lee. Appreciate it very much, Lee. Wayne Gottke says, if they waited three years to release New Mutants into theaters, they will wait as long as it takes to release Halloween Kills into theaters. Well, not necessarily, because there's a, I mean, New Mutants would have cost more, so it needs to make more in order to make its budget back. Um, and the problem is, though, is that, um, again, like I've I've mentioned, is that they want the move. They want every movie to go into the every movie that's intended to go to the movie theater. They want to go to the movie theater because, like this, this lockdown is is painful because there's you know again they borrow money. The budgets for movies are is borrowed money, and there's interest on that that accumulates. You know, and then of course the more interest that accumulates, the more the movie has to make in order to not just break even, but to you know make a profit as well. So, you know, Halloween Kills right now, the money they would, it's not an enormous amount of money, thank goodness, but still the 20 million or however much it was to make Halloween Kills is accumulating interest. And it will continue to accumulate interest over this, over this next year uh, that it's not in theaters, unless there was some sort of deal that, you know, there was a freeze or something. I have no idea, but that's not likely. And uh, so, um, New Mutants is a bit of a different beast. You, you know what I mean? It's, it's, uh, uh, well, I've, and New Mutants wasn't delayed, wasn't delayed because of a pandemic. It was delayed because of, of production issues, if I'm not mistaken. Um, cause it, it, it was supposed to be out like three years ago. You know what I mean? So, uh, there was no pandemic three years ago. So it's a bit of a different reason why it was delayed. I don't, th I don't know. I, I mean, it'll be interesting, interesting to say, but, um, I think Halloween ends is going to come out 2022. I don't even know if they're going to get to film that movie next year. Yeah. Well, if they do, they'll, I mean, all the protocols will have to be in place. Like I know, uh, Vince has been sharing a lot of info on uh, not sharing with me, but posting yeah. online and, and, uh, he's already back to set working on, on shoots in, uh, in Los Angeles. And then of course myself and Bruce are, uh, uh, we're putting together the protocols and procedures for what our set has to be. And, it, and we have to abide by that. Um, and so, you know, there are, uh, things in, in place. And when you, when you are working with a, a, a crew and actors who are, you know, not your buddies and your friends, there are standards and expectations that, that the actors and the crew have for safety. And, uh, so, um, you know, I, I would imagine that the same sort of things would happen uh, and are happening, of course, in the U.S. and abroad. But it, it depends on, you know, obviously the numbers here are a bit different than south of the border. So um, uh, we'll see. Fingers crossed, guys. Let's just hope everything chills out and we get back to uh, normal and we can all go and enjoy our favorite movies together. Yeah, I hope so, too, man. Well said, Tony. Zach Talk sends in a four ninety nine super chat. Says Dave and Tony, do you think they will recast for Black Panther since Chadwick died? That's my brother question because I that's yeah. his that's his expertise. Well, I don't I, my take is this: is I think you know we live in this world now where um, it's unfortunate what happened. You know, it, you know it is, and and it's sad, and and I think um, naturally, I think fans want to know it this year part two with him uh, maybe i don't know i don't know um naturally people want to know and i don't know enough about the movie the character or the universe to make it i'm speaking just on a very surface level from what i know um i from what i understand is that there's that 
it doesn't have to be the same character. Like any, like there are certain, you, you, you can have another character in the movie become Black Panther if you need to. Like, it's not like Spider-Man or like Superman or something like that. Like, like people can become Black Panther, several people. Sorry. Iron Man. Iron Man. Yeah. Things like that. I think that's how it works with that character, but the chat room can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I think, I, do I think they will recast? I think it's too early to tell. I think you can recast. Like the question is, do you recast his character to be played by a different actor? Or do you pass the mantle onto one of the key characters? Right. No. I think, I think if you were to do that now, it would rub people the wrong way. Sure. But I think if you create distance between the story and when and if you were going to do that, time can heal a lot of things, and people can I, pass the torch would be the smart way to go. Well, I yes, I do, especially if you want to do it now. Right. But you know, hypothetically, if Black Panther didn't come out for until four years from now, that's not likely. But let's say, right? You know, people things like news devastation, you know, it doesn't hurt as much as it did. It's not as devastating as much as it, you know, it was four years later as it was right when it happened. And, you know, to ask the question, oh my God, did you hear, you know, Chadwick died and, and, you know, so do you, do you think they should recast? Like, it's like, dude, like I just found out about it like three minutes ago. He died at 7.30 this morning. I'm not saying he died. I, I, I don't know what time he died, but, no, but there you know, were it's like, that online do like i saw that in some of the yeah. comments section i'm just like he hasn't even been dead for announcements been five minutes and you're already oh they're gonna recast like yeah well i don't think i i don't know i wouldn't see it as idiots but but i get what you're saying it's it, it's more of like but to ask that question now of course everybody's gonna say no and maybe no isn't the right answer like i know like from an emotional point of view and and that no you don't fuck he is fucking black panther and how and the impact he had and the impact the movie had and the impact on on you know culture and i totally understand it i i get it i i do i i can intellectualize it i understand it but you're also thinking about that probability the day he died right and i think if you think about that four years later or three years later people might feel a bit differently you know, sure. Princess Leia dies. Should they recast? She just died. Of course, everybody's going to say no. But think about it now. If they were going to make a sequel to The Force Awakens today, four years after her death, I bet you there'd be a lot of people going, hmm, you know, maybe. You know, because it's not as fresh. It's not as fresh. However, however, if you can pass, if it is the kind of character that you can pass the mantle to and many characters can theoretically be Black Panther because Black Panther is more of a symbol, like, well, not symbol. quite like Batman, but yeah, exactly. Um, then I think that should be seriously explored. Yeah, I think that would be a nice thing to do. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely, but, yeah. You know, and I know yeah. that's what you would obviously want, you know, to continue the story. Yeah, exactly, exactly, 100%, 100%. Um, D and T after all is said and done and it's me, Billy and Tony's fan film is done. Y'all should work together and create a brand new slasher, uh, for an original psychological thriller horror movie. All right. If you want to donate the money, we'll do it. Uh, what should we do? <laughs> These things cost money, folks. They cost a lot of money. So it's a good idea. But the thing is, too, is that when you like I, you know, when you're producing a movie like It's Me, Billy and the production value that it's going to be and, and whatnot, it's the kind of thing where Bruce and I are going to set the bar quite high. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to like the movie, but in terms of the way it's going to look and feel and its presentation will be will be very. Uh, to be you know, honest, I'd probably be more rather than doing new, I'd be more on board with collabing on a Halloween fan film because I think we would fucking just go balls in. Halloween would be fun. Halloween would be fun. But yeah, I mean, I'm not against anything. It just comes down to money. You know what I mean? Because it costs a lot of money to do this kind of thing. When you want to do it right. It doesn't cost money to pick up your phone and go into your backyard. But when you want to do it right and you want to deliver, yeah. right, and deliver quality, you know, and you look at the big players in the space... You know, and you're like, well, this is, that's the bar. You know, if you want to be taken seriously and you want to really make a, make your mark and put your, you know, your foot down and say, hey, you know, I'm here too. Well, yeah, it costs money to do that. You Halloween know, and, 4, sequel fan film, that's what they're saying. Yeah, that, that would be pretty, yeah. I, that would be, I, me and Dave, that's probably what we have, what we've talked about. I mean, we yeah, haven't really yeah. gone 
deep. I mean, cause he's knee deep into his project. So, but once he's done with that shit, I'm sure that's kind of one that me and him can sit back and go, yeah. so, what do you think? <laughs> yeah. Ex- yeah. It's, it's a really cool idea. There's it's ideas definitely a really cool idea. That where you could retcon five and six and do the Jamie Lloyd and Rachel Carruthers character so much better justice. That's not it. that it's not a hard bar to achieve either too. No, so. no, that's right. That's right. No, it's true. The Shape Man sends in a $5 super chat. Thanks, buddy. Says, was H18 trying to be symbolic when they showed Allison holding the bloody knife at the end as if she got through hell and back like Laurie in 78? Yes, but I think it had more to do with that the tide is changing. So if you notice in the original Halloween, which the only sequel that is canon in this new timeline, or the only movie that is canon is, of course, the original, Laurie throws away the knife on a couple of occasions. When she gets into the Um, when she's in the house, the Doyle house, she leans against the the couch and she drops the knife to the ground. Then she, when she exits the closet, she's got the knife in her hand and she throws the knife away. And each time she did that, he came back. And, but with the character of Allison, they focused very much on that she's still holding on to it. So it's almost like, even though Allison, I, I mean, who knows what the character of Lori discussed with Allison, you know, a, a, and the the stories she told or whatever, but maybe either subconsciously or consciously, the character of Allison is holding on to that knife because she knows the stories that her grandmother told her about and said, hey, th- here's what you don't do. You know what I mean? And and I think that's a symbol of strength. That's a symbol of, of we got this, you know, and, and because they didn't know if there was going to be another one. They didn't know. You know, they didn't know how successful Halloween 18 was going to be. It may have been moderately successful, but not necessarily successful enough to require a sequel. Um, so, you know, they didn't. So you you always, you know, unless you are a property where you know it's going to make money, like Star Wars or, you know, uh, Marvel or something like that, you can make a movie knowing that, yeah, we're going to make another one after this. But if it's a horror movie, you don't know. You have no idea. And so they were making that movie with ideas and hopes of continuing it, but they didn't know if they were going to. So the last thing, so they knew that the last thing that you see in this movie needs to be symbolic. It needs to be full circle symbolic in some ways. So when you see that knife, if this movie was not successful and people didn't like it and they were never going to make another one, the last thing you would have seen was Allison holding onto that knife. And it's a symbol of strength. It's a symbol of that things have changed. You know what I mean? And, and that's, uh, torch. and that, yeah, yeah. And so, so that's sort of, that's, that's what that is. So yes, it is, it is symbolic. Yeah. Nick sends in a $5 super chat. Thank you, Nick says, Dave, keep them McCray lives up with how, uh, with how you did yours last week with Paul and Brett. Yeah, that was a fun one for sure. With the two guests, with the topic of the five topic for, well, we'll keep again, you know, folks, you have to understand it takes a lot of work to put these shows together. And a lot of work to get guests and organize guests. And, you know, some guests will, that's right. Some guests will, will, will do it for free. Others want, you know, appearance fees and, uh, and things like that, which is understandable. Um, so it, it, it's, I mean, I'm doing what, four or five live shows a week on average, um, you know, and it, it can be, there's a lot of prep that goes into that, a lot of time. Um, so yes, it's something that I, I'm, I'm aware, but, um, you know, there's yeah, other things a podcast with people for free some like you said people want people want pay for their time yeah n- not everybody i mean not everybody but certainly depending on who the guest is and depend and i'm looking into certain people trying to make certain things happen uh sometimes it can be tricky and, and of course you know, she'll want a mortgage payment <laughs> oh her, well that's fucking ridiculous she can go fuck herself please um, she doesn't have the she hasn't earned it <laughs> she she hasn't earned that kind of uh, rate, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, yeah, we'll leave her nameless, but Jesus Christ. And, and, and had nothing to do with me. It was somebody else that had reached out to this individual, and uh, they wanted an, an enormous fee. For like 40 minutes, it's like, what? Yeah. You're, it's and, not and, like a lister, man. Like, yeah, fucking and this, get back. And this individual is really only known for one thing, and it was just like, Go fuck yourself. Like, I felt bad for the guy that... I, uh, I felt really horrible for the dude. Yeah, for sure. Uh, oh, anyway. Mac, uh, I got the hoodie at H&M, dude. That's where... Uh, I got it cool. last year at H&M. Um, mm. So they, they know, tend to H&M's do H&M's got some pretty good stuff. 
yeah, every October they tend to run through cycles of different horror characters. Like I got the losers, you know, hoodie as well too from it. So mm-hmm. yeah, I you know, check your H and M, you know, when October rolls around, they'll have a few, uh, of, you know, hoodies out with some of the guys on there. Right. Right. Yep. Jeff Harris says, Hey, Dave and Tony, will you guys ever do a commentary for Beetlejuice? Also, have you seen The Founder? I have not seen The Founder and Beetlejuice. Yeah, that might be fun sometimes. That's like like a November. Michael Keaton movie. The yeah. McDonald's. Yeah, that's a fucking great movie. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Beetlejuice would be cool to do. That'd be mm, fun. I haven't seen The Founder, though. H- have you seen it? Yeah, yeah, the Michael Keaton film. Yeah, it's based oh. on the story of McDonald's and how. Oh, Mc- that that one is that what he's talking about? That's what he's talking about. Oh uh, no, I haven't seen it, but I've seen it. I see it on Netflix when I'm scrolling by, though. Freaking movie, really good movie. In fact, mm. the dude who I can't think of his name uh, off the top of my head. You've seen Zodiac, right? Oh yeah, fucking great okay, movie. So you know who the guy who plays Arthur Lee Allen in Zodiac? Yes one of the dudes in there as well too who's the founder of the original mcdonald's Mm. um and i forget the guy who plays his brother i can see his face um he's got a mustache glasses Mm. he kind of has a seriousness to him but it's a comedic seriousness to him okay fuck can't think of his name man but i can see his face hmm just look up the founder. You'll know who I'm talking about. Yeah, I'll have to do that. But yeah, definitely Beetlejuice would be cool to do. Yeah, Beetlejuice. That's kind of like a October-November movie, sort it's, of. It's that, definitely November. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, let me see. Gary Rangel says, DNT, what's your thoughts on Christopher Nolan's A Dark Knight trilogy, and who is your favorite villain? I'd have to say Heath Ledger, Joker. Uh, I like it. I like it. I actually like Batman Begins better than The Dark Knight, unpopular opinion. Um, yeah, I like it. I have them. I don't really watch them. I'm more, I'm more Michael Keaton, Batman, and Batman Begins. Uh, those mm. are the two that I watch frequently. Uh, currently, as of right now, before 2021 rolls around, it's my favorite Batman. But I have a feeling that's going to change mm. based on what I've seen. With yeah, uh, if Pattinson what, can recover from COVID. Yeah, Pattinson, you know, let's you know send you know all of our well wishes to him. Good vibes, and hopefully he gets through this okay and recovers, you know, 100, percent and That's can it. finish this. Uh, I, I'm really liking the vibe that I'm seeing from Matt Reeves uh, so far in that trailer, and uh, it's not that I don't like the Nolan Batman's. I it didn't can I, like I said, it, I have them. I just don't watch them, and I, it's not ones that I go back to and watch because I didn't. Ledger's performance was fucking phenomenal but mm. i liked it. before joaquin i liked jacks you know i was a fan of jacks version of the joker until joaquin phoenix came around and i was like oh hello <laughs> like right shit. right um you know so it just it's just and I, and I know what i'm saying is just like crazy and you know especially for no, a lot makes of sense. Young people yeah. but like dude man you don't understand batman 89 was just dude that's like that that was the the blockbuster for us in the '80s, kids. That was our childhood. That was like, you know, yeah. holy fuck balls, man! This is fucking huge, and it was great. And just yeah, but yeah, the Pattinson Batman coming. I think that's gonna change. It's gonna yeah. be interesting. It'll be interesting yeah. to see for sure. Yep, yeah. I agree. Uh, I agree. Five two five at Dave McRae at Tony Michael. Five good things from H two O. There's more than five. I can give you. 10 good things. Oh, I don't know if I can give you 10. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's story arc. I like it better in that than I do the 2018 film. Uh, Josh Hartnett's character of the son. I like that better than uh, Judy Greer's daughter portrayal. <clears throat> yeah. Um, what else? The kills were good. I did like the kills in Halloween 5. Um, Halloween five. <laughs> I didn't even smoke, and I haven't smoked in too much. Holy H2. Jesus! <laughs> Halloween five. Oh my I god! Halloween five just popped into my head. Halloween five. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's all good. We're live, and I can't take it back and rewind. That's all good. Um, Let's see what else. I like some of the. I, I like the fact that they did some callbacks, but they didn't fucking oversaturate it. Like the the mm. moment there where Michelle Williams is like this and she's looking out the window, and 
you know, you kind of have that old throwback to Jamie Lee Curtis, you know, mm-hmm. um, and whatnot. And now we've seen, you know, in the 2018 film, but it's not Michael, it's Jamie Lee Curtis looking at Andy Madjack and it's like, oh, okay. Um, so that was good. Some of the winks and nods that they did, um, the masks, uh, unfortunately, there's moments where the mask is really good. And then there's a lot of moments where the mask is very, ugh, you know, um, yeah. So the kills, the story arc, I like the son better than the Karen Strode daughter. Um, I love the fucking, I love the finale when fucking Lori Strode, uh, fucking, you know, when she's finally facing, you know, going to do the showdown with Michael, uh, and face her fear and go at it with him. I liked that better than, uh, the 2018 showdown. Okay. Uh, again, personal opinion, not that the 2018 showdown was bad. I just personally mm. liked, um, I, I just enjoyed it better. And I will say this. The physique on the dude, although he wasn't, uh, he was very robotic, his physique in H2O was very in line to Nick Castle. Wasn't a big Michael, lean, thin, like Nick Castle was in the original film. Uh, he just, he didn't get that movement down just right. He, he, he Again, I, we weren't there on production. I don't know if that was the direction of the director. Um, so I can't throw the, the guy who plays him under the bus. Um... And then the ending, man, the fucking ending should have been the ending of the fucking franchise when she decapitates him. Like, that's the seal. That's that when resurrection. Oh, forget it. Don't even get me started. So there's a handful of things that I like. Anything, you know what, what should have been? Do you, no, no, there's nothing. Do you know? What, <laughs> <laughs> you go through all that. And I'm like, no, no, there's nothing. Anyway, on. <laughs> Sorry, dude. I was okay. I, I guess I have Neil. You're gonna get one from me. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, I, I, I like, yeah. I mean, I like uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, her performance. I like, I like her, her. She's, you know, believable in the role that she's in. But there's very little that I genuinely oh, sure. like about that movie. Yeah, that she goes through in H two O. Yeah. Yeah, there's very little that I like about that movie. I just don't. It, it, I, you know, I'm. I just, no, I get it. I, you've yeah. told me. I, I, understand. I, I don't think it's the worst movie of the series. You know, and I certainly can watch it. It's got, there, there are some redeeming qualities. Yeah, like there's some redeeming qualities. I do like the opening of the film. I think the opening, I, I actually think the opening of the movie with Marion Chambers is the strongest part of the whole movie. Uh, I think that there's, I, I think it's, I mean, it's a little, and that's, I mean, it's, it's, I don't think it's great. I'm just saying compared to the rest of the movie, I think the opening of her, you know, and she steps on the glass and the Sandman, the music stops and she goes inside and she's looking around and then uh, Gordon Lovett comes over and there's a whole thing that like, and then he comes in, he's still got the Halloween six mask on and like all that is, 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 is okay. Uh, I don't like the way he appears behind her down the hall. It's like, it shows up and then he disappears. It just looks awkward and weird. The stance is not how Michael would stand. That's but, what I'm saying. Like, I, you know, I don't know if it was his fault or was it the director's fault? You know what I mean? I don't know who was giving the directions there. So it's like, I don't want to throw the direction. Michael under the bus. In my experience, I think Christopher Nelson has been the only guy who's ever given any direction to any Michael on set in history by the sounds of it. I think it, it sounds like most Michaels were flying by the seat of their pants, which is why there's so much inconsistency. Um, uh, but yeah, no, no I, I think, and the more I think about this, dude, the more I think this would have been amazing. Now, again, it doesn't change the fact that the movie is, you know, it is what it is. What, Daniel Harris shows up at the end and saves her mama and kills Michael? Yeah. <laughs> no, what I was going to say was that I think... No, he you... just, just ruined my hopes and dreams all in one, <laughs> all in one sentence. <laughs> here's the thing, here's the thing, okay, so... And everybody in the chat room knows this. Because I've drilled into your heads like 5,000 times. So, Halloween 1 supposed to be its own movie that that was the intention of it there was never supposed to be a sequel or any more it's not it's not my opinion that's that's a fact um and it is its own film it, it is its own movie there there is a, a beginning middle and an end there is a moral there's a message there's a story right Lori, she doesn't she's a girl that doesn't believe in the boogeyman you know Lori, what's the boogeyman there's no such thing there's no such thing there's no such thing she goes through this whole thing he falls off the balcony 
She's there. She goes, it was the boogeyman. I, essentially saying, oh my God, Tommy was right. And Dr. Loomis is like, as a matter of fact, it was. He looks over and he's gone. He's gone not to set up a sequel. He's gone to perpetuate, To he's gone to, to instill and to send the message, you can't kill the boogeyman. You can't kill the boogeyman. It's all there. It's all there. And that it's like, like I said, it's like it's this Hitch- Hitchcock kind of thing. It's okay. Then they make a sequel. We know why they oh, made a sequel. Oh, and the Janet Lee. Sorry, that's another good thing. Nice little wink with the uh, psycho car. When oh, you yeah, said yeah, Hitchcock, yeah. that just reminded me what's in yeah, H2O. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's cute. Um, and uh, so, and then, of course, but we know why they made a sequel. They went on Halloween 2. Um, Halloween 2 sort of kind of is the beginning of Michael going in a supernatural route. It brings in the motive. You have the motive now. I still stand by saying that the motive is completely unnecessary because we never, and I've said this for years, we never see the Lori character find out that she is Michael's sister. So there's no payoff there. So you can remove that altogether from the movie. You, 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 the, the dream she has, okay. And I'm getting to my point folks, but you know how I am. Uh, the dream she has, you can, you, you, you can change that to a dream of the night that just happened. It's a dream of her back in the closet with him coming through the closet. You, that, yep. Boom, done. The conversation that Loomis has with Marion in the back of the car, just do a bit of a rewrite and figure something else out. And another reason why he's got to go back to the hospital. It's it, very easy. And you, and you change those two things and the rest of the movie can stay the exact same. The rest of the movie can say the exact same and you can leave it up to the audience to figure out, well, the reason why he's gone after her is because she got away and he's enamored with her and he's, he just wants to, you know, he hears he's it fixated. on the radio. Yeah, he's fixated, you know, whatever, right? Yeah. You know, predator, prey, right? And, uh, and the rest of the movie can stay the exact same because we never see her find out. When Loomis gets to the hospital, he doesn't say, you're, hers, you're his sister, holy fuck. You know, I mean, there's never a moment. We never, now, it's assumed that after the credits roll and she's gone to another hospital that she probably finds out somewhere. Well, she, she, she obviously does. But we never get to see that. So it becomes pointless for the character. We never see the payoff of that. But anyway... It puts in that. That's that's the beginning of the brother sister arc. It puts that in, and it gets a little more gratuitous, and you know whatever, right? And then you get to Halloween four, because of course there's three in us. All right, movie. take it easy now. And take four, it easy on my Halloween four, uh, Dave. No, <laughs> you, you're going to like what I'm going to say. So of course Halloween four, um, it, it, we know the issues with it, right? We know the mask. mask we know the shoulder yeah. pads. Yeah. You know we know, but I've always said this, and I still feel this way to this day. As far as extending it beyond a second movie, I think four is it's it's late eighties. The slasher subgenre was on its decline, but I think four is, and I've always thought, and and maybe it's because of what came after. Five is such a step down. Yeah. Five is so catastrophically bad. Five is such dog shit. That maybe, just maybe now, and I'm just trying to speak, you know, objectively, maybe f- it makes 4 look maybe better than it is. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a pretty decent sequel as far as, a, as far as a late 80s return to Michael Myers. It's, I've, I've always said that it's, a, it's, a, it's an acceptable mask, shoulder pads aside, it's okay. Like, it's, it's, it's yeah. kind of fun. It's not as, you know, a, a lot of the suspense is gone and there's a, you know, it's, but it's, it's 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 late 80s and and it feels it's it's okay it's okay and then of course there is that iconic ending it's known best for its ending and i think that well, can you rooftop. imagine can you imagine if that was the end of it all and that you're was just the end like of it all. what happened yes yeah. can you imagine because there is a full circle nature there Right, it it True. comes completely it comes full, full circle. circle when you think of Michael She's at the beginning. Sta- right, e- evil never dies. Right, you can't kill evil. And now, now, now it's Michael can die, but it's the evil that can't. Right, and and so there she is at the top of the stairs, and you're left, you're left with this image of Loomis going, no, no. I would totally be content if that were the end of the. That is the, 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 franchise. the end of it all. Now you maybe start with Michael killing as a kid, and it's Jamie Lloyd up the, in, right. in the same outfit, style like outfit. That's what I'm. That's what I'm telling yeah. you. Now maybe you know as the years go by, and we go through the '90s and the 2000s, and you know, and we get to now, maybe there is, and maybe H18 could have been a, a sequel to Four, or or you know, and and uh, they'd have to explain why you know Lori's alive, and you know, and then you could get Danielle Harris in there. It know? makes me then, wonder. Do you think? 
just throwing this out there to you yeah. and let you uh, tee off on it. Do you think if they did do that, and like you just said, ended at four, yeah. they don't do five and six, they do come back for H2O, do you think Jamie Lee Curtis would be ha- would have been on board to bring Daniel Harris into the equation since there was no four and five? I'm sorry, five and six? Yeah, uh, maybe. And no I don't thorn know. and none of that nonsense that she might have been more open to the idea because four was received as a solid sequel. And maybe you didn't get the whole maybe. thorn crap. Yeah, it's it's entirely possible. It's an, and it's why I always tell people like you know I mean look you know I, you know I say too that it's inevitable. The more you go on in a franchise, the shittier and shittier the movies will become. It's it's an right. inevitability because novelty wears off. You, you you have to keep writing things that justify the character being around, and eventually you run out of ideas. So then the weird and sensational creep into the narrative, and things get weird. You know what I mean? And you know, a la Jason goes to hell, or you know whatever right. it is, right? Like you get into or takes Manhattan. I mean, you run out of fucking ideas. So it's inevitable, but. Four is one of those movies where it's actually not bad, you know, and it's weirdly not bad. It's unusual. You don't usually see that. By the time you get to four in a series, it's like, and maybe it's because of that break. And, and I, again, I think it, it could be because you had a, sh- I know people love three now, but you had a shitty movie before. Trust a shitty me, movie wasn't after. like that in the 80s. <laughs> yeah, and well, yeah. And it, so it's like, it's this weird sort of kind of feeling about four. Uh, a lot of potential there. And I'm not saying that if you were to do a five, well, I have a video on my channel, um, a McCray Live from about a month or two ago, where I gave my idea right. for right. Uh, Halloween five. And I think it was a much better idea. And you don't make Jamie the killer. That, that's not what you do, but you'll have to go watch that. Just um, type in uh, McCray Live Halloween five or something. But you got to type in McCray Live Halloween five, because if you just type in Halloween five, there's a lot of other rants that I have that'll pop up. But, and, um, you know, so I, I've always, th- I've always thought that what, it, because it's such an amazing ending, you know, if anything, Halloween four has got one of the best endings, if not the best ending in the entire series. As far and, as sequels, yes. Yes, 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 exactly. And, and it would be such a cool, like just and of course it went it was moderately successful and you know I get it I, I understand why it went on but Halloween five is so bad that it's just like wow like it's so like just completely opposite ends of the spectrum you know what I mean it's like it's so bad you know and so what happened yeah. and um I but think the, the I, yeah thing, that think, that would have been an amazing ending uh, people would have talked people would have talked about that even more highly and it, it would have it would be even more iconic than it is now oh for sure yeah i mean f- uh, five takes a total shit on the ending of four um and i think what makes four really good is that you have uh characters in there that you um can attach to you know well written well thought out story arcs um you know with rachel and jamie and that sisterly uh like relationship and just uh rachel you know, being a phenomenal final girl going through fucking hell. Um, yeah. That rooftop scene is one. It's still one of my favorite, if not my, well, right. between that and the, obviously the iconic stock between Michael and Lori in the first film, right. two of my favorite Michael chasing after someone scenes. Yeah. Definitely the rooftop is up there for sure. Uh, yeah. I love the idea. You know, I heard about it, that they originally, they wanted to set that shit on fire. That would have been fucking cool. Yeah. It see, been. If they could have pulled that off and have the rooftop on fire, that would have been fucking oh, really yeah. cool to see yeah. uh, if they could have done that. And I even agree. the side characters, Meeker, he was a strong sheriff uh, in in, yep. in Halloween Four. Yep. You know, you, you can't even though he probably was, you know, two sheets to the wind. Loomis was fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, he was drunk yep. half the time. But oh yeah, for sure. I mean, he, well, I mean, his speech at the at the police station is one of my favorite it's dialogues a great from Loomis. Speech. Uh, it's a great speech. I'm so telling you, Michael Myers is in this town. He's here to kill that little girl and anybody who gets in his way. I love that shit, man. Every time I see that scene when i'm watching i'm like fuck yeah loomis you tell yeah. him i'm and then there's a lot of mood it's you know it's done the, the night shots are well lit you have that you know the blue light as we talk about you know the cl- classic lighting um well yeah you're, you're creating that cool atmosphere because it's that fall. the that the oh, the original halloween created and yeah. uh it, it it honors the original so good that like you said when five comes out you're just like what? Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck just happened yeah. here? You know yeah, exactly. 
and yeah, so yeah, I know. I think it would have been a really cool like. Um, imagine if we never now for those of you that love Rob Zombie's Halloween's or Halloween H two O or six or whatever. I mean, obviously, this would probably be disheartening for you, but hopefully, you can see what I'm saying. Like, imagine if there never was another Halloween. And four was it like that ending? Oh yeah, you know? no, and you'd always well. be like, "What?" Yeah, nothing, and then yeah. imagine now they were going to do another one that was a sequel to that, and Daniel Harris was involved. And, well, that's what I was going to say. Like, if fuck, if, if they know? didn't do an H two O, and like you said, no Rob Zombies, would you, you remember back when like everyone was making the argument that it should have been Daniel Harris cast as a daughter and not Judy Greer? Would you have lined up more with that in agreement if none of, of that stuff was in there that Daniel Harris needs to be the daughter in if, in the if it's a sequel to Halloween 4 and not a sequel to Halloween 1. Yes. Okay. okay. If it's a sequel to Halloween 1, then no, I still feel the same way because Daniel Harris doesn't exist. You know, if it's just a sequel to part 1. You know. True, I should have added that part in. Yeah. But if it's a sequel to 4, yes. If if it's a sequel to 4 and Daniel Harris wants to come back and the fans want her to come back, you're a fucking idiot for not With getting With Jamie her back. Lee. With Jamie well, Lee. Yeah, her yeah, back. of course. She of didn't course. die in the car crash. Right. She, she faked her death or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. Something whatever. happened. You make something up, right? Yes, of course. Then it makes it makes sense. You know, it makes sense from a writing continuity perspective. But in in H eighteen, it doesn't make any sense. You no. know. Um, but yeah. Uh, all right. We'll take this another five minutes or so. We'll sure. take this thing to nine thirty. Bottom bum bum. Let me see here. Jack McEwen says four wasn't a bad movie, but I just can't get past that terrible mask. It really makes me enjoy the movie less. I know it's petty you know, of me, but it really bugs me. No, I. You know what, Jack? There's Lim, moments you're not when alone. it's lit. You're not alone. It, it, there's moments in Halloween Four. If you watch it again, when it's lit the right way, it's yeah. not bad. But they didn't do it enough to hide it. Where it it unfortunately well, it stands out like a sore thumb. I got to be honest with you. There was a time when four, I thought four was the worst mask in the series. I don't think that anymore. And I'm not talking about the CGI mask because that's not even a mask. That's like a, just a, it's not even a real mask. You mean a surfer um, mask? The surfer Michael? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I actually think four, I think four, you're right. Like the, the mask in four looks the best uh, during the dream sequence at the beginning with Daniel yes. Harris. And, and the attic scene, it looks because it's half lit. Yeah, right, split right. Lighting. Yeah, when when she opens the door, and he just goes oh, like this yes, down he, like that. He's backlit and shit. Looks that fucking great. Fucking crazy. Even when that. he sits up on the other side of the bed and turns his head, and you know he's illuminated. It's the lighting, in light. yes. But it looks, but it's still the same mask. But it looks terrifying. You know, it looks creepy. You know, it's like what is this? You know, it's still. But yeah, the the yeah. Yeah, yeah, like where it gets kind of a little wonky looking is when um, he kills Meeker's daughter. It doesn't look right. Uh, when he's killing, when he's cl walking up the stairs to to face off with Brady, it doesn't yeah. look right. Well, and then it, there's it, the blonde haired mask and the. Yeah, Ben Tramer, Michael, Ben Tramer back from the dead. <laughs> That's it. That's um, it. Yeah, there's, so there's a couple moments where, the, where you see the weakness of the mask that if they had just really were paying attention to their lighting, like Dave pointed out and said, you know, the dream sequence that Jamie has at the beginning, it's the, right. the lighting is fucking spot on. The mask looks right. like butter up in the right. attic and on the roof. It looks really good because they're doing a really good split lighting with it. Even yes. when he's standing in the road and they drive away, okay, and he's sort of silhouetted and you barely see a front lighting on it, it looks good there. But like right. he said, you, uh, on the truck, I love the truck scene. I mean, it's great. It, it's 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 awesome. The music is great, but it just it, it sh they didn't light it properly, and you you see the masks mask yes. weakness. Yep, yep. No, I got you. The Halloween yeah. movie collector says you guys should watch Student Bodies, the spoof of Halloween. That would be hysterical. I've never heard of it. No, I've never heard Student of it Bodies. I'll have to check that out. Have to check it out. Um, let me see. Uh, Dalton B says blonde Michael from age four has to be the worst mask of the whole franchise. Actually, it's a great mask. This is what's funny about that. That mask is actually a great mask. And when you look at the mask, it's just, it's, it's a mask that hasn't been painted. The That's eye it. holes haven't been cut out. The hair hasn't been spray painted and the sideburns haven't been ripped off. It's just a Kirk mask is what it is. Essentially, essentially. I mean, well, the sideburns may be off. I'm not sure, but it's essentially a Kirk mask. Off, and I think the eyes are out, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's just the hair. Oh, well. maybe the eyes are out. Maybe the eyes are out. Yeah. yeah, but it's it's not spray painted white, and and the and the hair is blonde. It well, I actually about the Ben Tramer mask in eight. Was it H one? We no two. Yeah, I'm sorry, two, H2. two H two. Uh, yeah. 
I like the Ben Tramer mask. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, the mask, yeah, the mask in H4, it, it's just, it's like, it, it's it's funny because it's like, why, it for continuity, why all of a sudden is he wearing a mask that's not finished? That doesn't make any sense. And how, nobody knew. I mean, it's just incompetence at the that's highest bad. level. Like, how do you, I mean, you, you, you must have been working with a small-ass crew because yeah. nobody on set caught that yeah. shit. That's it. I mean, I understand why Pleasance didn't because he was two sheets to the wind, but yes. you know, that would make sense, but... I'm exactly. Thinking, like, everybody else, like nobody caught this shit. That's it. Oh yeah. They did it on purpose. Nah, it's it's insane. It's for insane. Us, for us fans to be sitting here talking about it 40 years later, 30 years later. Yeah, 32 years later. Two years this 32 October. years. Yeah. Yeah, 32 years. Mm. Wow. That's hard to believe, man. 32 years already. Like that's just Ooh, Villa I can't Villa Villa Lobos, what's Villa, your favorite mask? The OG. Villa Lobos. Villa Lobos. Yeah. You can't top that original mask. Oh, the original. Hands down. Hands down. Hands down is the original. Michael Myers, Dave, would you make a discard in the future? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. David Lee Barron sends in a super chat and says, Dear Piche, I saw your 2019 Halloween video. Uh, you went all out that night, bro. I wish Halloween stayed like that. Halloween isn't what it used to be. Oh, you're to oh yeah, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, that's uh, I that's that's uh, I used to I don't that house is not where I live now. Right. Sorry? He's talking about the fan film that you did in 2009, right? No, I think he's talking about the, um, uh, I used to live in Georgetown, which is a little town north of here. And uh, it, I put on like a haunted house show and I dressed up as Michael Myers and Bruce came over and we were putting on the, like the fog machine and the lights and things like that. And uh, yeah, we were, we, there's video of that on, on, uh, on YouTube. Um, but that's funny. Yeah, they don't, they don't. Halloween isn't what it used to be. And that's 2009. In 2009, Halloween wasn't, wasn't what it used to be. Like, I, I mean, I remember in the 80s when, when everybody was They've out. already, dude, for this year's Halloween, I don't know what they're telling for you guys up there or in, anybody in the chat room, but in my area, they're telling us, lock it down, shut the yeah. lights off, nobody yeah. go out. Like, our National Guard is literally going to be on almost every street corner. You know, it's yeah. so like weird, but yeah. Like, so like this Halloween dude, we're not doing anything. I mean, I'm going to be home. I'm going to watch. Well, we're going to be, I think we're going to be doing a show um, for Halloween. I think that's what we're doing. Yeah. And that's the plan anyway. That's we're the plan it's in the works right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, it sucks, but you're right. I mean, yeah. even before this year, Halloween has drastically not nothing like it was when we were kids. Anyway. Yes. Exactly. Um, you don't see the streets filled with kids anymore. And, and I don't go. blame parents. I mean, it, it, we live in a different world now where just too many fucked up people doing like f just fucked up shit. And it, it's, it's, it's it. unfortunate. It sucks. It yep. sucks for a lot of you youngsters out there because man, I'm telling you, man, back in the eighties and nineties, dude, it was just mad fun. Oh yeah, it was. was great. It was. I couldn't agree more, man. I couldn't Colin, agree more. Colin, I'm doing the same shit. I'm doing a Halloween. I don't know if I'm going to do all Halloween, but I'm going to do a horror movie marathon for that day because it's on a Saturday this year. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Halloween's on a Saturday this year? Nice. Halloween's on a Saturday. That's so great. I'm just going to do probably just horror movies all day and eat my Reese's Pieces and Kit Kat right. bars. <laughs> Yeah. You may Listen, shut down folks. Halloween outside, but I ain't shutting it down in the house. <laughs> That's going to do it for episode 86 of Two Dudes and Some Bullshit. Tony and I, thank you for watching. Thanks to our moderators, of course, Frank Riker, Tab of the Short, Darren Sands, and Jason Nike for doing what you guys do. Tony and I will be back next Monday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hope you guys enjoyed the show tonight. You guys are amazing. Thank you to all the super chats or the non-super chats, of course. If we didn't answer your questions, nothing personal. Uh, sometimes we like to get to others, give other people a chance too that have uh, that have not uh, uh, been uh, uh, spoken for yet. Uh, Tony, any last things you want to say? No, good show. Had a lot of fun. This was cool. Uh, enjoyed watching Friday Four with you guys. It was good to catch up on that film. It's been a minute, so yeah. Yeah. I absolutely agree. Uh, folks, there will not be a McRae Live tomorrow morning. Just letting you know, there will not be a McRae Live tomorrow morning. Uh, we're busy in uh, post-production right now. Uh, sorry, post-production. Pre-production, pre excuse <laughs> like, damn, me. damn, you filmed that shit? What's yeah, that? it's done already. It's done already. Uh, we're in pre-production on It's Me, Billy, and there's just a lot of things. Well, I'm going to have to switch. I'm hoping the 100th episode of McRae Live can be... Uh, 
well, maybe Wednesday. I don't usually do the shows on Wednesday. Maybe Wednesday, but probably Thursday morning because that's back to when I'm I'm usually doing it. If something changes, uh, then you'll know because you'll see suddenly I'm doing a 100th episode tomorrow morning. But I just wanted to let everybody know that it's not likely to happen tomorrow morning because of things that is going on. So look for the 100th episode of McRae Live this week, though. It's going to be this week for sure. Anyways, yeah, that'll do it for us. And uh, stay, stay safe out there. Uh, take care of yourself and each other, like and each other, like Jerry Springer says. <laughs> Fucking Jerry Springer, man. Fucking Jerry Springer. Fucking Jerry Springer. That'll do it for us, guys. Take care. Have a great day. Not a great evening. We'll talk to you soon. Cheers.